Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Tournament Fights. We got our a matchup with the two Boston boys, and uh, it's, it's going to be a fun one. Matt Damon versus Ben Affleck movies. So this is a technically an episode of Tournament Fights versus. So it's the twelfth one we've done of Tournament Fights versus specifically. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to uh, I talk about these. I was able to watch a couple for for this matchup. Not as many as. It, that I wanted to, so I definitely haven't seen everything, but I've seen most of it. Um, I'm your host, Jordan, the Movie Hero Anderson, so welcome, welcome, and we'll go ahead and... Oh, and and of course, I mean, for anyone, I'm sure everybody knows, we did it on our air coming out this weekend, which I saw, and I loved it, so go see air, because it's great, so... Uh, but, yeah, we'll bring in our panel for tonight. Um, we'll just start off with one of the biggest... Uh, Ben Affleck fans that I know from this community. Let's go with JPO, Jordan Owen. Yeah, hey. I was like, you better be pulling me up because I do represent <laughs> the Affleck as much as possible. Add yep. me on Xbox, <laughs> at Ben Affleck. I use that as a username <laughs> at a lot of places, actually. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> uh, I do love both of them. Much respect to Matt Damon as well. Affleck, I just have always felt is underrated. Finally getting his just due, so I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. And then we also have uh, Mr. Richie Goodacre. Yeah, Ben Affleck's all right, are you? Yeah, he's he's fine. No, no, no. No, no, he's good. I like Ben Affleck. He's good. You kick Uh, Richie off of the stream right now. No, no, (laughs) hey, 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 hey. All right. Yeah. (laughs) Ben Affleck's good. No, I'm not as attached. Ben Affleck's good. Matt Damon's good. And so is John Oliver. There you go. John Oliver's in the background. Hello. (laughs) Yeah. There you go. No, I was like, well, wondering where the hell that third name came from. Honestly, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, we also have our our friend who's actually from Boston. We got Dan Skip Allen in the house. How's it going? Hey, man. I'm glad to be here. You know, when when this came up, I was like, oh man, I gotta do this one. These are my boys from Bean Town. That's where I come from. I got the jersey. I got the hat. I'm Mister Boston, as far as you know. If you can't get Jen Kemp, you got me. So yeah, uh, right. It's the next best thing, and I've been following. Met, uh, Bat, Matt and Ben since the beginning, you know, since School Ties days and, yeah. and Mall Rats and all those movies. So I've been watching them for decades. Well, funny enough, I actually reached out to to Jen, but 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 she's still getting settled in with 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 Andres. They they moved in together out in Boston. He made the move out there, so so they're getting settled in. So they'll be back on our show. They're good friends of the show, but the, they're just getting settled down for for a little bit. But but we also have uh, joining us. We, we have uh, Stephen Shepard, aka David Webb, for tonight. Which, <laughs> if you if you know the movie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ben's cool, but I gotta say, I think Matt Damon probably has a slightly stronger filmography overall filmography. But I'll probably agree a little. <laughs> but uh, so who will win, Ben or Matt? Of course, it'll end up being <laughs> it'll end up be Goodwill Hunting. So what does that mean? It'll be a draw. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep, it'll be one where they appeared to go. I was going for that Dogma and Jason and Bob. We don't have to fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess if you go to Goodwill Hunting, technically Matt because Ben's like he's in well, it. Well, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, but Ben Affleck's not only in it, but they both co-wrote the movie, so it's what kind of like their baby. Yep. <laughs> And then also we have, last but certainly not least, we have Matt Beer. What's up, Matt? Nothing much. I am not from Boston. I am a man from Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not from Boston either. If you read below, I've never even been to Boston. But but someday my my um, my cousin, who I'm pretty close with, she went to UMass, and she's she uh, is very familiar with that whole area, and she she. Uh, 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 Actually lived in uh, Boston, so one of these days we have a plan. She's gonna uh, take us out there, show us around, all that stuff. So, so eventually I'll get out there. So, 
Bring yeah, your but shoes. bring your walking shoes. You're going to be doing a lot of walking because there's a lot of stuff to see. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I'm actually down for that. I need to get into a place where I can just walk everywhere because because I'm in a small town. You can't walk anywhere. You got to drive. So and you want to yeah. take the tea. You want to take the tea. I'll tell you right. You're going to love the train out there. Nice, nice. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So so yeah, uh, yeah. One of these days I'm going to do like a whole trip down the East Coast. I'm actually going to DC the. Uh, in September, so I need to just like shoot up to New York and Boston. <laughs> but um, yeah, so how it's gonna work tonight is uh, it's just uh, simply a tournament of 64, and just basically uh, just like March Madness, you you just vote round by round for the movie that you you like the best, or uh, if you want to stick with 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 one of the two actors, you vote for one over the other, or if you like one of the the poster's better, or you just want to make up a, a reason. Maybe there's a, a movie you really dislike and you want to go against it, or just uh, whatever. We uh, we like to have fun here, so uh, yeah, just vote to your your heart's desire for whatever reason, and then um, yeah, we'll just get to a, a champion. You you do have to vote no matter what, even if you haven't seen both a movie, so you can can just come up with which one you you most like to see, or just whatever it is. So so yeah, uh, and give me one second, I'll bring up our uh bracket here and um austin pez how he was kind enough to make this bracket so i haven't seen any of the matchups i don't well i got a, a preview of the first one but that's it so so i thought yeah. you were about to say i haven't seen any of these and movies I, oh that, that's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i haven't seen a single one yeah but i'm hosting now the, the show, directorial yeah. <laughs> movies of ben count as part of his his, his thing i don't think that we we counted the ones that that he directed. No, just the ones that he appeared in. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, the town. So the well, town. Argo, yeah, but Argo and the town. I think. I think we're on the list. But like because Gone Baby in. Gone. I don't think Gone Baby Gone was. What? Yeah, there might be be a couple. I'll let, I'll let Austin kind of have some final little tweaks there. So so he may have added a a couple in there. So oh, we'll okay. see what what happens. But yeah, I didn't but look yeah. at the list. I didn't look at the list. I never look at the list. I, I want to be surprised. <laughs> yeah, and and my little intro that I I usually do uh, um, is not any of Matt or or Ben. So we're just gonna skip it. And we're just gonna go right right into it. So <laughs> save some some time here. Uh, let's see. Let me just make a quick adjustment on my end. All right. So we, and we will start at the bottom of the the ladder of of how it. Uh, Everyone appears on the screen. So, Matt, you will have the first vote. And we'll reveal the first one. We have Chasing Amy versus Shakespeare in Love. Up first. So. What? Hmm. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> the first matchup? Wow. Yeah. This should be like a and these are all just. Go ahead. Yeah, they're all completely randomized. There, there are no seeds. There's no anything. So, I mean, it's just all up to the random. Yeah, this is a, a tough one to start out with. So. <laughs> yeah. Say, I really like Chasing Amy. I think it's a really good movie. Um, I might be alone here because everybody hates on Shakespeare in Love because it beat out Saving Private Ryan. I'm actually going to go with Shakespeare in Love. I think it's just the better overall movie. Um, you know, obviously you got your great performances in there. You know, Oscar nominated, like I said, should have won. You know, you can just ask somebody and I'm sure they'll say no. Blame Harvey Weinstein. True. Yeah, um, but yeah I'm going... I'm going yeah. Shakespeare in love. Yeah, sounds good. Well, Stephen, what are you going to go for? <clears throat> Have you looked at the list? There are six movies on the list I that are blind spots for me. And unfortunately, Chasing Amy is one of those sex. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a big blind spot, not only for Ben Affleck, but also for Kevin Smith for me. Um. I don't love Shakespeare in yeah. Love, but I enjoy it. I, but I enjoyed it. And Affleck has fun playing this, you know, cocky actor. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll vote for Shakespeare in Love. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, Dan, what are you going to go for? Yeah, I'll be honest. I freaking love uh, Chasing Amy, but um, it's basically made mostly. Joey Lauren Adams and 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 Jason Lee's movie more so than what uh, Ben Affleck or is it Matt Damon that's in that? 
Ben Affleck. It's Ben oh, it's Affleck. Ben Affleck? Right? Okay. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. I forgot who was in it. I, I apologize. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> seen it in so long. But so, <laughs> I don't think right? you love it then. <laughs> I do love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love I've seen it so long. I, I think it's been 30 years since I've seen it. Um, I've saw it like two or three times in a row, but then I haven't seen it in like 30 years. You're right. But Shakespeare in Love, there's that one scene with Ben Affleck that just is so good that I just love that scene with Ben Affleck in it. But the movie as, it, as itself is a great, great film. I know the whole thing about Shakespeare in Love beating out Saving Private Ryan. I know a lot of people... But it's a really, really good movie, and um, I really, when I was, when I was the mid twenties, I was seeking out this movie. I would call the local newspaper in Orlando and say, "Hey, when the hell is Shakespeare in Love coming here?" And they'd be, like, "It's coming next week. It'll be playing at this theater." So I drive like an hour. This is like twenty something years ago, and I went and saw that movie, and I was like, "Wow, this is a fantastic movie," you know. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Shakespeare in Love. Yeah, yeah. Sounds By good. the way, uh, Chasing Amy came out 26 years ago, so it couldn't have been 30. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean. Come on. <laughs> what what 30? Roughly, yeah. 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 <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> but but uh, Richie, what are you going to go for? We did shredding dance, Dan Allen's uh, Love of Cinema here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all so good. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a, I have a blind spot in this list too. Shakespeare in Love. I haven't seen the movie. Uh, I'm not really, I'm usually not into these type of movies, but I'll give it a watch at some point. Uh, possibly, maybe one, but yeah, Chasing Amy is one of my favorite Kevin Smith movies. Uh, yeah, it's it's probably this is more sort of you know it's sort of deeper movies. It's not like doesn't you know it's not a movie that sort of goes for like a lot of laughs. It's just, it's more it's more a movie with a message, and uh, yeah, it's sort of like one of the more kind of uh, subdued Jane Silent Bob. Sort of appearances too, like, uh, but uh, yeah, it's still, it's still really good, um, and yeah, uh, I, I I really enjoy it. So I'll go choosing Amy. Yeah, well, uh, JPO. Uh, I, I I was wrong, Jordan. We do need seven people. Can you get Ross in here real quick, please? So Chasing yeah. Amy has a shot. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. damn. I'm already upset. Uh, this is the damn brackets. I wish uh, Chasing Amy had fought something easier. Uh, fucking reindeer games. Come on. Uh, yeah, I won't hold. Uh, you know, the same part writing against Shakespeare in Love either. Um, it definitely. I don't like nearly as much as though as Chasing Amy. That's definitely up way up more my alley. I love the screenplay by Smith. Uh, almost nominated, supposedly. But yeah, I think Affleck's great in it. Lauren Adams. Uh, it's in my top. It's not in my number one. I always have kind of flip between this and like one or two other Kevin Smith movies. So Chasing Amy gets my vote. Yeah. Well, well. before I give my vote, I'm just going to shout out some people that are tuning in. Got my girl Sarah tuning in. She's been watching almost every episode. Uh, and then... Uh, Brian, he he reminds me that I actually do have. Uh, let me see where where's comment was. That I actually do have uh, Matt Matt Damon in my in my little intro thing. I can't find it. Oh yeah, here we go. There it is. Technically, Matt Damon w- was in Google Hunting, and he is in the intro. I forgot about that. Uh, and then hey, also, hey, hey, hey. D- don't skip over that hash. I saw that hashtag. What you got something to share, Jordan? <laughs> yeah, Three, I mean, two, I'm kind of a, a girl. Bit. It was a girl I've been been talking to, and we're kind of dating. Yeah, I just oh, okay, like, like kind of public, <laughs> but but there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, in the end, together for for, for two months. There's the hashtag. There it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, but it's long distance. That's why I haven't made it official. She lives on the east okay. coast. We're we're trying to work that out, but but um, yeah for. For my vote, yeah, I and, and one where like I could have given the best picture to a couple different uh, movies. I mean, Saving Private Ryan, Life is Beautiful. I mean, that movie is great, and, and even the Thin Red Line. I think all of those are are uh, uh, worthy. So I mean, like, like who knows? Like, it's a pretty. I mean, for only having five nominees, still pretty stacked. But yeah, I really love Chasing Amy though, and like. I, I'm just not a, a big fan of those period piece kind of like just movies like that. Like, like, I'm kind of like, like awesome. It says like in, in, 
Like in the 15th century, England, blah, blah, blah. Nope, I'm out. Like if I read that in the, in the description, I'm immediately, nope, not going to watch this one. So, I mean, I don't do it every time, but like uh, uh, most of the time. So I got to go with, with Chasing Amy. I think that it's, that it's great. I was a little late to it, but I only saw it maybe like three years or, or four, something like that ago. And I uh, and I really like uh, the, the speech to the end by by silent bob where he actually talks i think that's cool and it's a it's a cool rom-com so yeah i'll give it to to chasing amy so i think that means we have a tie here well my box low but, change change boxes for me and matt real quick but the tie goes to matt and, and matt you can change your vote if you want to <laughs> it's up to you i can be bought so if jordan hey, wants change, to send your me PayPal. some money change your paypal <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's only a dollar. I gotta go Shit. chase Rune Love. Ah, damn it! Uh, <laughs> I knew I went too low. Give me that yeah. refund. I ain't cheap. Shakespeare in, in love and Spend more money. I'm Jordan. Trying to see. Oh, shit. Uh, you know, take one. Split it with me, Richie. You cheap bastard. Well, Jordan, Actually, I I would have went Jason Amy if you would have gave me twenty bucks and a hug. <laughs> yeah, right. bucks well, a little bit. All right, I'm well, actually gonna call. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Since Brian actually reminded me, I, I am going to play a, a little intro because Matt Damon is in. We're going to play a play. wonderful game called Who is your daddy and what does he do? It's showtime. What do you say we cut the chit chat a hole? May I see your invitation, please? Sure. Here's my invitation. Let's do this, Schmidt. Yeah. Just like we always do, Jenkins. Jenkins, Jacob. Oh, I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. I mean, come on, I just don't see a problem here. Let's just do it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> so there you God go. Damn it, Brian. <laughs> He's breaking the show longer. I hate you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but we have not our next matchup, we have the Born Supremacy up against Mallrats here. So, uh, this time we will go to Steven first. Who do you want to go for? Steven and his huge your... swanky haircut that he was trying to hide from me. <laughs> I <Yeah>. that. <laughs> We're going to go mean... to your, your, your David Webb pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time oh, since. That's what David Webb is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you, didn't, you don't remember no. the yeah. Jason Bourne's real name? Nope, yeah. <laughs> no trivia point for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen Mall Rats, but I, I do remember enjoying it. But I mean, I love the Bourne franchise. So, I, And this is the movie where Paul Greengrass took over as director and there were, maybe there were a one, one or two fight scenes when the shaky cam was a little bit of a problem. But for the most part, I, I it's, you know, I think... No one does shaky cam better than Paul Greengrass. And uh, is that a compliment? <laughs> sure. I think yeah. I, I think he, he, I, I think Paul Greengrass is awesome. I, I'm gonna go with Born Supremacy. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Well, we'll go to Dan. What are you gonna go with? Yeah, I'm actually. I mean, I I love uh, Mallrats. I think it I mean it really captures a kind of time in in, in film and and kind of pop culture. You know you. When I was when I was a kid, where you just kind of go with your friends and you just hang out at the mall and you play video games, you go whatever, you go to the food court or whatever. It just kind of reminds you of that kind of um, time in your life when you're younger, or or if you're an adult and you were doing that with some friends or whatever. But uh, I think the best of the, the Born franchise is Born Supremacy, and I just absolutely love that movie. And I think Matt Damon absolutely kills that role in that movie. And I think, um, uh, um, who is it? Richie? Not Richie. Um, Hello. not <laughs> Richie. Steven? It's Shepard. Steven, Steven yeah. Shepard. Really. Shepherd touched Steven. On it. All right. I get confused all the time too. <laughs> um, I just forget. I got so much on my mind guys. So I apologize. Um, so I think he, he made some good points about Paul Greengrass. I think uh, you started seeing Paul Greengrass come into his own as a director and, and these, uh, uh, born movies. So I'm going well, with the Born Supremacy. Yeah, we'll just be glad we don't have 
Jacob Barber because I used to do the thing where I got Jacob and Jordan like mixed up all the time. So, <laughs> but I'm so but, you'll call me Jacob sooner or later tonight. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll go to Richie. What do you think? Yeah, Malcolm, um, you're next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, you'll do that. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I love more rats. I own it. Uh, it has gone down a little bit uh, in rewatches, but I, it doesn't mean that I don't love it. I do love it. It's just like other other movies have kind of topped that you know that list on rewatches. Um, yeah, uh, I, but I do really like it, and it, yeah, it captures it. You know, it, it captures it in a time capsule, and you know, growing up in history and stuff. And um, yeah, I, I, it, it is. Uh, yeah, there are some great quotes here. Um, yeah, I, I might go Born Supremacy here. I, I, I think Born Ultimate, you know, probably not another Born that's going to come up. Born Ultimate is my favorite one, but Born Supremacy is really good. Uh, <laughs> it's just, and, and JPO, it's, it's, it's my loud ass washing machine. Um, uh, <laughs> a big pot of tea there, Richie. What's going on? No, it's my loud, loud ass washing machine. I, 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 I don't know why it's so goddamn loud. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, but yeah, I. I'm going to go Born Supremacy, but I love more. Yeah, well, it'd be kind of fun to get some of these these Born movies up against each other and see how they they fare against each other. But but uh, JPO, what do you think? Yeah, I'm sad Kevin Smith's having a rough uh, round one here so far. But uh, I'm, this time I'm actually very much in agreement, though. Um, I like Mall Rats. It's lower Kevin Smith for me here. You know, I have problems, some problems with uh, some of the characters and um, – I can see why people originally didn't even like it. Well, I did the boring trilogies relatively tight. And yeah, this might be the best of the three. So Supremacy will also get my vote. Yeah. For me, like, Born Supremacy is like my my third uh, favorite. I say third favorite because, I mean, I love them all. But, but I mean, out of the, the uh, franchise and and... I'm pretty sure. Spoiler alert! This one where they do Matt Damon's girlfriend dirty, and and they like off her, <laughs> and and just more of the shaky cam kind of thing. But they're they're really minor nitpicks though. But uh, I want to show some love to Mallrats because that's actually my favorite Kevin Smith movie. I love Mallrats. I just love that them being in like a one location. I love uh, yeah, just like running around having crazy antics in, in this mall. You got the best Stanley cameo in in. in in any movie like he's great in, in it he actually give him some like really decent lines to say and then i'm a big michael rooker fan of like him kind of doing this whole game show being the, the like crazy dad thing and, and then i think i think jason lee's kind of more in the forefront too so I, I appreciate that so so yeah i'm gonna vote mall rats uh matt what, what do you think all righty um so this was a tough one you know i was leaning born supremacy as uh, i put in the private chat but yeah. i'm gonna go mall rats actually Ooh, um, you know <laughs> i'm actually gonna go mall rats switch it here. up nice uh, i'm gonna switch it uh jordan did send the money i did get it in time i still yes. need the hug uh no okay but uh <laughs> well, i didn't no, vote I for just... mall rats i'm so confused he did <laughs> But no, I, I had to go Mall Rats here. Um, oh, really I have a feeling one of the other Bourne yeah. movies are still going to be on here, and I don't think this yeah. is the best Bourne film. Um, but Mall Rats, I, I think it's a great time. So I'll go. Mall yeah, Rats. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, still it's going to be Bourne supremacy, but it's close. Mm -hmm. A little love for Mall Rats, but yeah. Let's, let's see. We have Zack Snyder's Justice League, but like I kind of say, you can kind of like like say this is whatever Justice League you, you want it to be. I think most people. Have, Agree, Justice League or Zack Snyder's cut is the better one. But I mean, if you want to talk about the other one, is only yeah. one cut on here? Uh, yeah, there's only one cut. So, right, so sure. yeah, yeah, and then going to face Jersey Girl. So, another Kevin Smith. Oh, so, man. Stop <laughs> killing Kevin Smith off yeah. in the first round, <laughs> right? What the fuck? Well, really? Well, we'll really? Go to, <laughs> we'll go to Dan. Uh, Boy, think? I am not a fan of Jersey Girl at all. Oh, God, that's a terrible movie. Um, oh, man. Oh. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Richie, what do you think? I think Jersey Girl's charming. I think it's underrated. I think people unfairly shat on the movie when it came out. 
I think it's a good movie. Uh, you know, I think people are kind of. Uh, I think maybe uh, Gili heard this movie. For some reason. I don't know. I I I I, I like the movie. I think it's fun. Uh, it's charming. Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Something different from Kevin Smith. Maybe they, people weren't ready for that sort of tonal shift. But yeah, like I I, I have no issue with it. It's not nothing. It's by far like, not not the worst Kevin Smith movie. And, and yeah, I I I really watch it occasionally. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I like think Zack Snyder's Justice League, I, I, I like. I don't like it as much as like um, maybe like Austin does, but you know, it's certainly definitely an improvement. Um, but I, I can kind of see where the match might go here. But so I'll go Jersey Girl. Why not? I don't want Kim Smith to get killed off either. Yeah, right. <laughs> what he do to anyone? Yeah. Uh, JPO, what do you think? In high school, I memorized the monologue of Ben Affleck telling his baby girl that he promises to do her better. I never did a monologue for Ooh. Zack Snyder's Justice League because there isn't any good ones. Jersey Girl gets my vote. Ooh. Also, Justice League was around in high school, so that's not really possible. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of like where this is, is going because, yeah, I'm also a, a fan of, of Jersey Girl. I think that it's that's fun. And, and like, I, I think even if I remember right, I think there's, like, a little Matt – yeah, Damon Damon cameo, I think. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, they are they are in it together. And then like even Jennifer Lopez, he pops up in their their thing now. So Yeah, that's so, yeah. why I said really hurt this And if stuff. you don't like her, she's dead soon. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. But and also like I really do like Zack Snyder's Justice League, but if I were to get it's kind of nitpicky uh, about it, like it's just just too many slow motion, just kind of them standing in a row, them kind of just like I don't know, like like, look at all the members of the Justice League. Look, look, look how how awesome and majestic they look over and over again. But that's just a real small nitpick. But but I just kind of want to see what what happens here because I actually do like Jersey Girl. So I'll vote for Jersey Girl and just see what happens. Uh, Matt, what, what do you think? If you took out all the slow motion scenes and made them, you know, like normal speed. Justice League would have been a two hour movie. You know, I would have took two hours out of it if you yeah. did that. Um, so the so I, <laughs> Yeah. It, it, and I, when it comes to things like this, I don't count theatrical or theatrical. I don't count director cuts because it wasn't the movie the studio put out in theaters. It's just an extra yeah. thing. So, like, I wouldn't count um, the Richard Donner cut as Superman 2. I would look at the original theatrical release, Superman 2, even though I think the director cuts for both are better. That's how I look at it. With that being said, Jersey Girl is a uh, big old pile of shit. So I'm going to go. Oh, yes. I was so oh, with you for a while there, man. Yeah. You, 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 man. you, you watch your mouth. Hey, you watch your you just turned on us at the end. Yeah. But, but Stephen, then, what do you think? Uh, this is not even close because uh, <laughs> I don't like either version of Justice League. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I thought Jersey Girl was a fun, fun, charming movie, so I'll go with uh, Jersey Girl quite easily. Upset Ooh. City! Upset, so <laughs> <a> Jersey Girl. <laughs> but, but, Jersey Girl, but, not part of the shit. Yeah, Jersey Girl makes it, but not Chasing Amy. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, but What world does Chasing Amy and Mulrats not make it, but Jersey Girl... Moving on. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we want a zoo versus. Oh. <laughs> well, sorry, Jersey gonna... girl. Yeah. Guess you're not going much further. Yeah, because we bought a zoo's about to kick your yeah, ass. Yeah, we bought a zoo. I don't know if anyone's gonna vote for we bought a zoo. I mean, we could just put through Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, put it. Through. I mean, I, I'll defend it a little and saying it's not that bad. It's a fine family film, but yeah, it's, it's a fine family it. film. I I love we bought a zoo. I wish yeah. it was going up against something else. Yeah, yeah like right. it would have a shot in another bracket that wasn't, you know. What it, if if it was record. going up against Jersey Girl, I would have I would have gone with uh, We Want Is <laughs> I, 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 I would have. We're, we're, we're not giving the masterpiece Ryan. that should have won Best Picture a chance yeah. here. Yeah, right. We got to see it go up against Shakespeare in Love here and see what that battle Matt does. Damon, Citizen Kane. We're not going with that. Yeah. <laughs> up next, we have the Phantom. Phantom. Which is a, uh, and it's uh, like a motherfucker. Uh, ben Affleck's in it, I think. Yeah, I uh, forgot that's a Dean Paycheck. Paycheck. Oh man, we got we got two good, like bad movies here. Here we go. Hey, <laughs> you leave Affleck alone. <laughs> yeah, they're both Ben I, Affleck. I like so, Patrick, actually, well, yeah, we'll go to Richie first. 
my god, I'm getting heckled by my fucking bloody bet washing machine. Shut up. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, a paycheck is a bad movie, but it's fun. Fun, bad. A lot, a lot of Ben Affleck's bad movies are fun, bad. I don't know. It's kind of like, it's got, got that charm to him, you know? Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I like fandom. Fandom's like a motherfucker. I don't know fandom. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Uh, JPO. Yeah, as much as I quote uh, that quote and talk about phantoms, uh, solid <laughs> once, kind of slow, not that great. Paycheck also not that great, but watchable, in a like kind of like Richie said, kind of like a fun badish way, like, but not that bad. Like it's just kind of fine, and I think it's more fine than phantoms. So paycheck. Yeah, I mean, paycheck kind of interesting for me because I I saw. It, when I was in high school, and I remember that the group of friends that I went to go see it with, we went in like a big group, and and like we had we had a lot of ADHD people that like we would watch a little bit, then when we get out and we walk around the theater, and then we come back. We weren't we weren't really like that enthused with the movie. We were just kind of like, like like let's go see what's going on, or by concessions, let's go see if we can can like walk into another movie and watch some like part of some other movie or whatever. So so yeah, um, but. And I've never seen Phantoms. That's just one of my blind spots. So I'll still give it to a Paycheck because it's, it, was a, it was a very interesting time at the movies. Because of any movie that I've ever seen, I've never been so in and out of the theater for it. So like I, I saw most of it, but but like like I missed little parts here and, and, and there. And also uh, a shout out uh, uh, Paul Giamatti and, and and Uma Thurman, even Aaron Eckhart to an extent. So yeah. Uh, Wait, but uh, Matt, why just Eckhart to an extent? Like, what do you do? <laughs> Well, it's good when he wants to be, he, but he, he did not. buy Frankenstein. <laughs> Much love to yeah, Paul right. Giamatti, to Uma, Eckhart. I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I got my eye on you. <laughs> but Matt, what do you think? So I haven't seen either one of these movies, but I do like it when I receive a paycheck for my job. So I'm going to go paycheck here. <laughs> sure, yeah, if yeah. you ever wonder why Affleck did the movie, it is in the title. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. I want to receive phantoms from your job? That's not good. So yeah, no, um, not that, not that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think, Stephen? Well, also the chance to work with John Woo, I'm sure, was enticing. Yeah, Rick Flair's favorite director. <laughs> and uh, but also, isn't it based off of Philip K. Dick story? I think yeah. probably. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's no Minority Report. It's no Total Recall, but it's. But I, I still enjoyed it. And Phantoms is one of those movies. It starts off kind of intriguing, but it's really not very good. <laughs> so, but P- Paycheck's a fun, you know, sci-fi action movie. So I'll go with Paycheck. Yeah, and I think Malcolm's going for Phantoms, maybe? Since he was the bomb. No, 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 he's, he, no, he's, he's just quoting like me. He's just quoting yeah. James <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Um, There's a reason it's quoted like that in the movie is because it's making fun of the movie. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Dan, what do you think? Yeah, uh Fandoms is a blind spot for me. I've not seen that. Uh seen a lot of movies, haven't seen that one. Paycheck I actually enjoyed uh when I saw it how many ever years ago it was that I saw it. I haven't really revisited it much, but I didn't enjoy it when i was watching it um so i'm gonna go with paycheck yeah yeah and uh uh richie did you vote yeah i, I voted pa- I'm yeah, all, I'm fan vote paycheck goes through. all right all right so it'll be paycheck cool sounds good we have james and Bob strike back. <laughs> <laughs> yep going up against true grit for matt damon so <laughs> Damn. All, all right so this time it'll be a jpo first Ah, damn, this is one that was a th- it's a little bit of a thinker for me here. Obviously, very drastically <coughs> different movies. Um, I like True Grit. Uh, it's also one one that I don't really find myself going back to, you know, in its own right. While Jane Silent Bob Strike Back is a heavy rewatch for me as far as comedies go. Uh, Affleck and Damon are a nice ch- a part of that, you know, small part, kind of in the middle, but uh, uh, the movie itself is really good. So I'm gonna go with Jane Bob, actually. Yeah, um. Yeah, I'm not like like a diehard fan of of um, a True Grit or anything because like uh, I do like the original and, and this one's probably about on on par with that for me. 
I mean, I didn't think that it really like did anything to like like better, like do anything better than the original. I just thought that they were about it as good. But but uh, at Jane Silent Bob though, yeah, I go back to that movie all the the uh, time. I've been having to to rewatch a few things for for well, we watched this, this movie a few times. I should say for uh, a few shows that I've been been on, and yeah, there's some really funny stuff that I totally forget about. In, in, um, shout out the Scooby Doo scene, that's great. Uh huh. And then uh, Will Ferrell popping up in there. So, so yeah, I'll go Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, Matt, what do you think? Jane Silent Bob, it's so much fun. I mean, you have obviously the Mark Hamill cameo at the end with uh, the Star Wars parody that they did in there. It's a lot of fun. You know, it's a a movie that you can sit down and watch with your friends at a party is kind of how I view that movie. But True Grit is fantastic. I love True Grit. Um, Obviously, Coen (laughs) Brothers did it. Great Coen Brothers movie. Great performances um, from Matt Damon, Jeff Bridges, uh, Haley Steinfeld. I'm going to go True Grit. I don't even think it's close, in all honesty. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) sounds good. Uh, I'm Steven. What do you think? So I like Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back more. I think it's one of the funniest movies of all time, especially love when they get to Hollywood. But I'm actually going to go with True Grit because Matt Damon has an actual role in it as opposed to in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Neither, both of them are just really uh, cameos. Yeah, that's true. So, well, Dan... What do you think? I'm a big uh, Coen Brothers fan, and I love their westerns. And one of their westerns is True Grit. And you know, I know I like the John Wayne um, uh, True Grit, but I actually think this is a better version of True Grit. It's I know blasphemy, right? You're saying something that's better than the <laughs> yeah. original. But actually, I really think they really. Get, I mean, Jeff Bridges as Rooster Cogburn, and just Matt Damon and Josh Brolin and Haley. Everybody in this movie was fantastic. This is a really, really good. Uh, movie and it's it's the rare occasion where the remake is better than the original and so that's why i'm going to go with true grit yeah yeah sounds good uh richie uh, what do you think fuck fuck mom no the fuck fuck okay yeah uh, <laughs> i yeah uh I, yeah i know like ben affleck matt damon are basically cameos in james lambox right back but they're still great cameos and i go i go back and rewatch it more then I would watch True Grit. True Grit, yeah, I would argue, yeah, True Grit probably, and yeah, all of its parts, probably a better movie. But the one, no, you know, a more favorite movie of mine is Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. So I'll go that way. Yeah, well, we have another tie, and I, I think that's how we're going to go to Steven, right? You had a tiebreaker. I'm the tiebreaker. So, I'm kidding. So, <laughs> last time. Uh, but what are you going to go with, Steven? You're going to stick with it or switch it? Stick with it. Uh, hey, 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 hey Steve, what's your bank detail? What? Yeah. No, no reason. It's just a random question. Uh, there's there's no, no reason for me asking that question. I just asked what your bank details were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I. For the same reason I gave, because Matt Damon has an actual role. Even though I do love Jane Silent Bob Strike Back more, I will stick with True Grit just because. All right. That's fair. Yeah. Well, up next we have the Born Identity going up against Hollywood Land. So, uh, and this time it'll be me first. And. I've never seen Hollywood Land, so I don't really know that much about it. I can't really comment, but but The Born Identity is probably my my second favorite of the series, and I, I think it's great. I just like the like that like it actually follows like The Born Identity He's trying to figure out what his identity is, and like he he uh, um, has amnesia, he forgets it all, and just going through all these different uh, pieces to kind of uh, piece it all together and. And that, that like figuring out his identity kind of runs through a few other movies, but this one he's really trying to figure it out. He has no idea, and I think that it's great. Yeah. So, and funny enough, I remember that I saw this right after I saw 
a Ben Affleck movie that, the same year, uh, uh, The Sum of All Fears, and I thought that was great. But then I saw this, I'm like, that blew that movie out of the water. So, yeah, this one's way better. So, yeah, let's go Born Identity. So, uh, Matt, what are you going to go with? I also have not seen Hollywood Land. Um, it's probably a movie I should check out. I'm going to go with The Born Identity by default. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Steven, you got... This one's hard, actually. Mark says it's underrated, Hollywood Land. It is. You know what? I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with Hollywood, Hollywood Land. I mean, you know, we already had Ben Affleck as Batman. Uh, we'll have another, I think criminally underrated superhero movie superhero that he plays later on <laughs> and here we get to see him as superman since he plays uh george reeves <laughs> i'll mm. go with uh i'll go with hollywood land sure yeah sounds good uh dan what yeah uh, and i love uh the born identity that's the, is that the first one in the trilogy in the in the series the born yeah. identity yeah yeah, I really First. love that. Really got that. Really got that series kicked off very, very well, and and I really, really liked it. But I wanted to kind of give some love to an underrated uh, Ben Affleck movie, and that's Hollywood Land. I mean, where he plays George Reeves, who plays Superman, and it's a, you know, it's a, a film noir murder mystery set in in Hollywood because it's, you know, um, back then, and and it's like, wow, I'm we're getting so many of these behind the scenes making of this story or that, whether it's Tetris or Blackberry or uh, a deal from Nike or whatever. And this yeah. is one of the earlier ones where we kind of got this story about the behind the scenes of a, something and uh, a, a murder mystery in a way, you know, and uh, it was really good. I really, uh, and I was, you know, Steven took, took the words right out of my, you know, Ben Affleck plays Superman and he plays Batman. So this is a Superman. So there you go. So I'm going with Hollywood land. Yeah. For me also just to add that the point I didn't, uh, it seems to have the least amount of shaky cam. So I appreciate that. <laughs> so, well, it's also uh, but, directed uh, by Fred Ryman as opposed to Paul. Yeah, yeah, it's not bold. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that kind of helped. Yeah. From edge of tomorrow <laughs> and like, uh, American made some of those, but but uh, Richie, what are you, what are you gonna go? Yeah, with? Uh, Born Identity is really good. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I, I love the movie, but yeah, Hollywood Land's underrated, and yeah, it's uh, yeah, I think uh, Ben Affleck does a great job playing uh, George Reeves, playing Superman. Uh, yeah, and it's a pretty dark tale, sort of a murder mystery, but uh, yeah, because but I don't think people are enough people know about like George Reeves, and uh, no, no actual relation to Christopher Reeves, by the way, just. Just a coincidence. Hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, and yeah, and what became of George Reeves? <laughs> he kills himself. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, does he? Uh, <laughs> does he? He might not. I don't know. Uh, it, maybe. Uh, you have to. Jesus, Richard, you had two people say they haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but you know, but like I did. Uh, um, anyway, Hollywood Land is a good movie. You watch Hollywood Land. Well, you know. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, JPO. Uh, yeah, I'm, a lot of the same sentiments have been said. Um, I like the entire Born trilogy. Um, like I said, maybe two is my favorite, but at the same time, not by like a long degree. Like I think all three are kind of in the same vein for me. Uh, I'll definitely give some love as well to Hollywood Land in my vote. Uh, Golden Globe nominated for Mr. Affleck, Oscar snub as always, baby. Ooh, yeah. So it'll be Hollywood Land. It might be a bit of an upset, maybe. I don't know. But, <laughs> Hollywood Land takes it. So up next we have the talented Mr. Ripley up against Boiler Room. All right. All right. So we're uh, back on the mat. So what are you going to go for? So I have not seen Boiler Room, but I have seen the talented Mr. Ripley. Therefore, the talented Mr. Ripley gets to move on. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, Steven, what are you going to go for? Boiler Room is pretty good. I mean, you've got um, Ben Affleck has a fair, somewhat small part, but he's really good in it. Um, kind of reminiscent in some ways, I think, to Alec Baldwin's um, 
uh, cameo in Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Uh, it's uh, also kind of similar to the movie. Wait, next to who? I didn't hear his name. Hmm? You said next to who? Next to who? Never no, mind. I was trying to make a fuck you. That's his name joke. Never mind. I failed. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's also, uh, the movies also you could also compare it to Wall Street obviously that's a big inspiration for the movie obviously uh, but I think the talent of Mr. Ripley is definitely the better yeah. of the two so I'm going with the talent of Mr. Ripley I'll tell you guys yeah and, and also not not here but it but but it has this uh, one of his favorite actors Giovanni Ribisi for some reason he doesn't like that guy <laughs> in the movie so so yeah, so yeah, he wouldn't vote for that. But, but um, Dan, what are you gonna go for? I'll tell you what, you guys don't know this about me, but I absolutely freaking love the talent of Mr. Ripley. I mean, Kate Blanchett, Jude Law, Matt Damon. I Man, mean, uh, 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 Philip Seymour Hoffman. This movie is so freaking good, and I cannot believe that we never got a sequel to this. We got a, a, a sequel with like a show with, 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 um, with his face, uh, Malkovich, John, Mal which was terrible or, or a, yeah. a, something with it. This, this Matt Damon should have won an Oscar for this. That's how good he was. Jude law should have won an Oscar for this. They well, were Jude so, was nominated. I think they were so good in this movie. And Anthony Minghella, God, uh, God rest his soul was on a, a little bit of a roll in the 90s and early 2000s. I don't understand how this movie didn't translate more to, to uh, the cinemas and fan bases. This is an absolute masterpiece of filmmaking by Anthony Minghella, and Matt Damon gives the performance of his career as in this. In this as, uh, I mean, he has to learn Italian. He's learning how to mimic people's writing he does so much stuff in this role i mean he's just so great this i'll tell you i realized i said this kid is going places and uh, i love uh the talented mr real i think it's an absolute masterpiece so i gotta go go for that boiler room is okay like uh somebody said ben's in it a little bit it's more of a vin diesel movie than ben affleck yeah <laughs> sounds good well uh uh, Richie, what do you think? I was about to ask whether this is one. Her boiler room is one of Vin Diesel in it, and yeah, yeah, it is obviously. Yeah, Town of Miss Ripley was he's in my uh, right top one twenty eight. Uh, Town of Miss Ripley. Uh, oh yeah, he's right there. I wasn't looking at the post properly. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, Town of Miss Ripley is in my one twenty eight. Uh, it rules. Uh, it's, a, it's a great. It's a great movie. Great, great kind of a. Yeah, great kind of yeah. Uh, Great, uh, you know, like you know, con sort of movie. It was, it, it, everything about this works uh, from the cast, and yeah, just the suspense. It, it, it fucking rules. So yeah, uh, tell Mr. Ripley quite easily. Yeah. Well, uh, GPO, what are you gonna go? GPO with your hat. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as it gets chilling, people put on hats. Richie, nice stash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, as as said, uh, ballroom. Uh, it's, it's it's fine. It's another one that I really haven't gone back to in, a, in quite a long time. And as I already said, Tell him Mr. Ripley, I think is fantastic as well. You already mentioned the suspense <laughs> that's built up, and it pays off. Um, yeah, I was just looking it up, uh, Dan. Yeah, I guess it's it's a, almost like a DVD sequel with Malkovich, and there might have been like a, a brief TV show at one point. But yeah, we haven't ever had a really nice like continuation, whether it's even Damon, because I guess there is several books too, so um, maybe one day. But yeah, this yeah. this is great nonetheless, so Mr. Ripley for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen Boiler Room, but uh, Austin, me and you, we're going to watch that, that new Waco, the Aftermath series starring Giovanni Ribisi. We're going to watch that soon. So, But, but, um, but yeah, the, the talented Mr. Ripley, I only saw this movie about a year ago, and, and man, this movie blew me away. Like, like the, well, You watched it for one of my things, didn't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for one of yours. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, look, uh, when I saw it, like I was like, "How have I not seen this movie sooner? Why is it this movie talked about more?" Like, like yeah, like I think Matt Matt Damon absolutely like given the performance of his career. Like I agree with that, and he, and like he should have won an Oscar for it. Like, like 
Like he was great in this, just just all the different things and the little nuances and and like the things he was was able to pull off in this. It's just it's just really really cool. Like I was just hooked from beginning to end. And then yeah, you throw in like Philip Seymour Hoffman, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jude Law, even um, Philip Baker Hall. Who I'm a big fan of. So uh, yeah, like this is pretty easy for me. This is the easiest one so far. Talented Mr. Ripley. So to be yeah. fair. The talented Mr. Ripley did come out in 1999 when he was up against other great performances like Kevin Spacey in American Beauty, Denzel Washington in The Hurricane, mm -hmm. um, Russell Crowe in The Insider. I mean, that was a stack. Should at least get nominated, like it, like at, I, at least I feel like. But you know, I I always thought Jim Carrey should have been nominated that year for Man on the Moon. Yeah, mm, Jim yeah, Carrey absolutely. almost like has like one of the most snubbed actors out there. <laughs> yeah, that is true. One of these days, either a, a podcast or or a tournament of like the of the best actor to never be be nominated for an Oscar. So we had, mm. that's not a bad one. That's yeah. a good little idea. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. So, but we we have the Born Ultimatum up against Fortress <laughs> of <the Monster. laughs> So I mean, we could just put to the no, 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 let's anyway. talk about this. What's the bottom one? one? What's the bottom one again? Sure, yeah. I have I'm going to love Forces, love Forces of, Nature, of Nature, but unfortunately, yeah. it is up against a, a better movie. Yeah. Well, uh, Steven, you're up first, so <laughs> going to stick with uh, the, the Born Ultimatum? The, yeah. I, like I said, I do love Forces of Nature, and I think I think Ben has great chemistry, not only with Sindra Bullock, but also with Maura Tierney as, as yeah. his fiance. Um, but I mean, the Born Ultimatum is my favorite of the Born fran of the entire Born franchise. So yeah, I gotta go with Born Ultimatum. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Dan, what do you say? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm right with uh, Stephen. I gotta go with uh, Born Ultimatum. This is one. Of, I mean, the, the, this franchise was getting better and better. Even though I liked the second one better, but. I mean, it wasn't like they were going downhill in quality. They were getting better and better in quality, every one. The third one was just as good, if not better, than the first or the second one in the trilogy. And sometimes these romantic comedy movies just kind of, you know, they just, they just, I'm not the biggest romantic comedy fan. And I would rather see an action movie nine times out of 10 over a rom com, unless it's somebody like with Jim Carrey, which is one of my favorite actors of all time, so or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna go with the Born Ultimatum. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, uh, Richie, what, what do you got? I mean, I advocated to talk about Force of Nature. I don't have a lot to say about it though. It's like I don't even know what. Yeah, we could. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. With this, this kind of, kind of cute, but uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, you know, it's kind of forgettable. I forgot this movie existed, but you know, until it came up, I'm like, oh yeah, that was a thing. Yeah, it was. It was, it was, yeah. it was fun <laughs> for what it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did. I did think more of Tony's kind of odd. I, I had a crush on her since Sly Liar. Uh, that's all. Oh, awesome. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, yeah, the Born on the is the best Born, in my opinion, uh, and still maintains that. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Force Nature is fine. Maybe it would go, it would win if it was going up against something that was bad, but it's not. So, Born Ultimate. Yeah. Well, uh, JPO? You going yeah, I, I don't mind Force Nature. I think there actually is some chemistry between uh, Bullock and Affleck. I wouldn't mind, you know, if they had a better script at some point, but Born Ultimate, I think it's just the way tighter of the movie here. Uh, decent at the time, which you thought was maybe kind of a final chapter, too. So, Ultimate, I'm going to get my vote. Yeah, yeah. I never seen Forces of Nature. It wasn't really one that was like calling like my name. It wasn't saying Jordan, come watch this. You'll like it. No, yeah. like so. I haven't seen it, but uh, but the one Ultimatum is my favorite of the the series. I think that it's really really good. I mean, you kind of put David uh, um, David Strathern and. Uh, Hewlett Styles kind of more in the forefront here and in, in this one. And like it's a really cool uh, uh, moment where where he's talking to uh, David Strathern on the phone about, about like, like how he's in his office. Like, I don't know the actual quote, but I'm standing in your office, like whatever, you know. So, uh, so, uh, but I think that it's great. Yeah. Like, this is this one with it. 
where they just amp it up to like the the full i mean just like as as like crazy and like as as like action packed and like like is it you can go for one of these mm-hmm. movies so i'll go with the born ultimatum yeah uh matt what do you think yeah i'm going born ultimatum too it's my favorite of the series and um i never watched forces of nature um that was a movie that came out at a time where I did not appreciate the art of the rom-com. So I'm mm-hmm. going to go born ultimate. Do you appreciate the art of the rom-com yeah. now? I absolutely do. It is my favorite yeah. genre. Okay. Ooh. I kid. Nice. I kid. <laughs> okay. I was going to say. <laughs> uh, all right. We have, I think that's, oh, that's Ocean 13. I yeah, think Ocean's 13. 13. Yeah. I see 13 in the, cor- in the corners there. Yeah. Uh, going up against runner runner, <laughs> so I mean, I don't know if anyone's gonna vote for runner runner, but we could just put through uh, 13. I just know that it has a seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I just looked that up, so <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah, it it's one of the cash faults, but and 13 is not great, but yeah, it's better than runner runner. I don't think runner yeah, runner yeah. is like garbage or anything. I mean, it, I, it came out at a time it's where not. I worked at the theater and saw literally everything, but Ocean 13 is definitely better for sure. Yeah, Runner yeah. Runner's like, you know, guilty pleasure territory. Yeah, Runner Runner's are right. They tried to make a, like, you know, that Affleck is really bad. It was this one, I like, and trying to make like Tim Blake into this, you know, kind of big you know, like, acting star. And, you know, yeah. and it, it, I think he saw potential to kind of, you know, he's a decent actor, but yeah. It, yeah, was, like I'll defend uh, Tim Blake and something. The so. material he was given here wasn't great, but yeah, and Affleck has a bad guy. He's all right. They're just the material. He is. He's fantastic in the Trolls series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like here, that's just more of maybe like a writing issue. I don't know. Um, also, I like Demi Artis, and she's underrated. What's the dispute yeah, to yeah. House? What's the dispute to House Creed? It's good name. Yeah. Oh, um, next, wow. we have The Legend of Bagger Vance up against Rounders. Oh, fuck yeah. I love Rounders. I love Rounders. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this time, it, it'll be Dan first. So, what are you going to go with? I'll tell you what. I love me some sports movies, and I think there's some really great golf movies. One of them ain't The Legend of Bagger Vance. And it's like, I mean, the fact that it's got Robert Redford, Morgan Freeman, Matt Damon in this movie, and it turned out to be, and what, Charlene Theron, I think, is in it. And it turned out to be such an yeah. awful movie. And Rounders, about poker... You think, oh, wow, this movie's about poker. John Malkovich, Edward Norton, Matt Damon. I mean, wow, what a freaking great movie about guys playing yeah. cards. You know, make sure you don't give your tell away by eating your Oreos or something. But uh, I love Rounders. <laughs> yeah. I think this movie is fantastic. Um, it just tells you, if you make, you can make a movie about anything if you do it right. And I think this movie is fantastic. So I'm going with Rounders. Okay, but... Morgan Freeman is not in Beggar Vance. That's Will is Smith. it? No, that's Will Smith. Will Smith. Oh yeah, my yeah. bad. <laughs> we're just we're, this, yeah. we're just Wikipedia-ing your asshole. <laughs> yeah, I thought I forgot. I forgot he was. I I knew it was somebody. I'm not gonna say. I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. All right, Will Smith. Will Smith. That's fine. But it's still, I hated it. Malcolm, I absolutely hated it. Uh, He's saying that he thinks it's very underrated. So yeah, I <laughs> but, don't disagree with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but uh, mm. uh, Richie, what do you think? I don't, I don't hate Bag of Vance that vehemently. I think it's fine. It's a good movie. It got nom- <laughs> some nominations. I think it's it's a good movie. But I, I I don't like it. I don't like it as much as Rounders. Rounders is awesome. Rounders Rounders kicks ass. And yeah, it's it, it, like uh, I, I think Edward Norton sh- out, out, outshines everybody here. But like Matt Damon's still really good. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's an awesome movie, so I'll go around this, but Mega Bands is fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, GPO, what do you think? Yeah, I was thinking about it. Um, Bag of Fans might have some sweet moments, but I'm absolutely more of a rounders guy here. I again, I, there's some some sweet, juicy, suspenseful moments here. Gives a man his money. Uh, everyone comes to play. My mafia is fun. Means you are killing it, rounders. Yeah, and like I swear, mm-hmm. like. Like every time that I do one of these, I'm like looking at, at what what movies I should watch from my, my blind spot. I've not seen Rounders, and for some reason, I'm looking at the the list and I overlooked it because I wish I would have watched that. And 
instead of a couple other ones because I watched some kind of mediocre ones that we'll get to when they pop up. But but there's nothing that I really just loved or anything. But and I think back on the Legend of Bagger Vance is fine. Like I I think that it's 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 all right. No, I don't. I dislike it. I don't really love it. There's a movie that was made, so yeah. But uh, so uh, this might be one of the few times that they actually vote rounders because I really want to see it. Like it, uh, if it does well in this, and maybe even if it doesn't do well, I might just watch it anyways after this. So, so yeah, we'll go with rounders. Uh, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna go rounders. Um, I haven't seen The Legend of Badger Fants. This is the first time I've heard about it, but <laughs> Rounders is a really good movie. So yeah. I'm gonna go with that. The yeah. movie about golf. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was about a badger named Vance, but uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> not quite. Oh, Badger's Vance, yeah. not Badger. Yeah. Badger, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but actually like I'd probably like it more if it was about a badger. That'd make it more, more interesting. But yeah. But even Talking make, Badger, that golf. Make the animated too? movie about yeah. it, maybe. Maybe a, a stop motion animation movie. Yeah, maybe like, like Caddy Shack or something with a yeah. like a top badger. badger. Let him be a golfer. <laughs> Wes Anderson, yeah. are, you, are you listening to us right now? This would be perfect for you. Yeah, yeah, we got got some gold. If you do that, maybe I'll actually like a Wes Anderson movie for once in my life. But, but um, Stephen, what do you think? I, I I do like Rounders a lot, especially uh, you know, always enjoy watching John Malkovich chew the scenery. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um. But I really love The Legend of Beggar Vance. I think it's actually uh, really underrated. Uh, I'll show some love to that one. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Stephen's always good about giving love to the underrated ones that don't get a, a lot of love. So, yeah. <laughs> but it'll be rounders. Uh, next, we have School Ties. There you go. Uh, going up against Goodwill Hunting. There you go. Wow. All right. Wow. Yeah, it's an interesting matchup. <laughs> so, uh, it'll be. Uh, Richie first, so yeah. It. School school ties was good. You mentioned it early, very early. Uh, Damon here, uh, but uh, and Ben Affleck, but uh, yeah, yeah, like you know, they they definitely found their footing with uh, Goodwill Hunting. Uh, Goodwill Hunting has come close to winning a tournament fight and, and it yeah. hasn't won yet. I think their best opportunity yeah. to me, to be honest, is in this tournament fight. Uh, I, I look, watch it not win now that I've said that, but <laughs> Google Hunting is is a is, is such a good movie, and yeah, like I mean, it's more Matt Damon's film than Ben Affleck's film, but they're both really good at it. And you I mean they, they they wrote this movie, and it's and it, and it shows how talented they both are, not in, only as actors but uh, writers, and uh, you know, and then you know, in Ben Affleck's case, you know, you know, just in general, film filmmakers, I guess, in, in all aspects of film, so. Um, yeah, I'll go Google Hunting, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, JPO, what you say? Yeah, I know it might be blasphemy. Unfortunately, School Ties is a blind spot. I was going to get to it this week. Did not. Google Hunting is definitely something I've kind of grown up with. Love it. Another monologue I had memorized was Robin Williams in high school. I absolutely love that monologue. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I got to go Google Hunting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I have seen School Ties. It's just been... A, a minute, maybe like about a twenty-year uh, minute since I've seen it, but uh, and I remember it being really good. Yeah, like like uh, Matt Matt Damon kind of opposite Brendan Fraser, and 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 yeah, I think it's really good. But but you're going up against Goodwill Hunting, and and like I'm I'm not the the biggest like like I'll just say that that like it it's not in my my top three or four favorite uh, genres, just a straight up like, like uh, uh, a drama, like a serious uh, drama. I like a little more, more, more substance or like elements to it for me personally. But like this one is great though. Like, like it might be like I don't know. Like it's it's up there for like maybe the best Robin Williams performance of his career. Like it, uh, for me, like it just really blew me away. And then uh, of course Ben Affleck and, and Matt. Uh, Damon, like they have great chemistry. They like they they play off of each other so well in this, and it just really works. So, so yeah, it's got to be be pretty easy. Goodwill Hunting. Uh, Matt, what are you gonna go for? Um, 
look, school ties is fine and all, but Goodwill Hunting's great. You know, like you said, Robin Williams Robin Williams is absolutely fantastic in this movie. The it's not your fault scene is just uh-huh. it's just heartbreaking. Oh. I'm I'm going Goodwill Hunting um pretty easily. Uh has a great story about how uh the people that ended up picking it up picked it up were they actually read the script and nobody else read it where they added a bunch of weird things in a fake sc- or yeah, they added things that were really weird in the script, gave it to everybody. Nobody read it except for one studio. And they're like, why is this in here? And they're like, well, we were just making sure you actually would be willing to read it. So it's pretty funny. I, I would look it up if I were you guys. Yeah. Well, well shout out to another movie from this, this list. Let's see. Good Will Hunting 2. From Jane Silent and Bob Strike Back. <laughs> I want to see that yep. movie. But, uh, but Stephen? <laughs> what uh, are you going to go Yes. For? School Ties is good, but Goodwill Hunting is, of course, great. So, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a, a, a pretty good way to put it. Like a good movie going against a great movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, School Ties. I mean, it has yeah. a really good message about anti Semitism. Semitism and Brendan Fraser and Matt Damon, really good movie and really good. It show it has a lot of young actors in it. You say to yourself, "Oh, I can't wait to see these people." They, if you go look at the the actors that are in it, you say, "Wow, these guys are all turned out to be major big time players in Hollywood and and whatnot." Yeah, so yeah I mean, yeah. a lot of so <laughs> yeah. <Chris> Donald is <laughs> yeah. a good TV actor. You know, yeah, I like uh, NCIS Los Angeles a lot. Yeah, actually. A lot of people watch TV. <laughs> Um, but Matt Damon and uh, Ben Affleck and, and, and Gus Van Zandt and Robin Williams, they absolutely made it a masterpiece. And I, and I don't throw that word lightly. I've used it once already. But I just uh, this movie resonated with me so much as a, as a kid growing up in Boston, as a teenager when this came out, like in my early 20s, actually, when this came out, it really hit home for me. with a lot of elements in Good Will Hunting that really – reminded me of myself growing up and you know i mean it was a double header that i saw i remember seeing this as a double header with a double feature with titanic and what a day of filmmaking that was titanic could go to will hunting on the same day and i and i I was like wow what a freaking great day of filmmaking and watching i mean the film watching for me that was i think i was gonna say you made goodwill hunting and titanic that was a busy uh, day i was watching i was watching (laughs) at the theater and uh you know a record but uh, yeah, I gotta go with Goodwood Hunting here. This is an absolute great, 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 great film. Uh, yeah, and also uh, shout out Stellan Skarsgård. I think he's pretty great in, in Goodwood Hunting. So, That's right. So, yeah, yeah he's in uh, Goodwood Hunting. Hunting. Yeah, uh, I'll take it. We have the Adjustment Bureau uh, going up against Reindeer Games. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, um, and. JPO. We'll still uh, talk about it, so it'll be JPO. Uh, yeah, Rainier Games, you can, if you know what you're getting into, you might can have some fun with. But I'm definitely giving my vote to Judgment Bureau. I really liked it. Uh, it's a sweet tale with a nice little sci fi edge to it here about, you know, what if you do you follow your love or do you follow, you know what I mean? Um, kind of what you're, what you're destined to do here. Um, and I, I kind of really liked it. I liked the little spin on it. And maybe another Philip K. Dick, uh, here. And, uh, so Judgment Bureau. I think it yeah. Is. yeah, and yeah, I actually haven't ever seen Reindeer Games, but I remember seeing that the um the trailer for it when it came out over and over and over again. They really like milked that that trailer quite a bit, but um, but like I, I am a big Charlie's uh, a Theron fan. Like, like she's my favorite actress working today. So I mean. Got a decent little cast too. Gary Sinise, Ashton Kutcher, uh, yeah, like Donald Logue. So I mean, but I, I, Ashton I just heard nothing but but bad things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's uh, in it. I mean, it. yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that? Yeah, but he's in it. Remember him being in the trailer for it? So yeah, <laughs> but but um, but uh, the adjustment bureau. I think that's great. Yeah, it's got got like uh. A pretty solid role for Anthony Mackie in there, and then, and then Emily Blunt, Matt Damon. I mean, I mean, yeah, like it's a really cool, uh, just, just that idea that the kind of JPO spoke about, just like yeah, like 
like what happens if you if you follow your your uh love and not not what what uh everyone else wants you to do or like the destiny they kind of like try to adjust to everything and like he's just trying to figure out what the heck's going on just get away from these guys and it, it, it's a good time so yeah uh, i've gone back to i've probably seen the movie like about six or seven times so i'll vote for the adjustment bureau uh matt what do you think i'm also gonna go adjustment bureau um i haven't seen reindeer games that's why yeah yeah <laughs> sounds good um steven so the Adjustment Bureau is a cool concept and a pretty good movie that I wish was better. Um, yeah. But Reindeer Games is a really fun guilty pleasure movie for me. I I I, was, I really enjoyed it. So for that reason alone, uh, I'm going to actually show some love to uh, Reindeer Games. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Uh, Dan, what do you yeah, think? Ranger Games is fine. It's you know this action kind of movie. This, you know, what, don't give me crap. What is it? Sam Jackson's in there, or am I wrong on that? No, you know he's not in there. All right, no, um, I don't think so. Yeah, I forget. I forget, I forget, who's, in the lanes. I forget who's in there. With, maybe you're thinking of Isaac Hayes. Maybe he's in that. Oh, Isaac yeah. Hayes. In there, yeah. I forget. Yeah. I forget. I, I'm sorry, guys. I just forget. I, I, you know, I mean, I've seen so many movies; it's hard to remember who's in everything. Sure, yeah. uh, I'm gonna have all the stats and Wikipedia's and all that stuff in front of me. I'm just watching you guys, so. Um, <laughs> but I remember it. I just love uh, the adjustment. I just absolutely fell in love with that movie when I first saw it. Emily Blunt and Matt Damon are fantastic in it, and I, I love that the whole concept of, of what it was going for and. Uh, you guys have all said it about the movie, but I, I've watched it more times than I would probably uh, share to, uh, care to say. That's how much I love that movie. So I'm definitely going with the Adjustment Bureau. Yeah, I think in the in the movie, you just really root for for Matt Damon and Emily Blunt as a couple. You just want them to freaking be together, and there's it's like like not always working out for them. But but uh, uh, Richie. What do you think? Yeah, Reindeer Games was a it was on the guilty pleasure one we did because it it's a big guilty pleasure for me. It's so fucking <laughs> stupid. This movie is so dumb. The, the just nonsensical twists in, in every which way. Uh, ben Affleck's not even that good in this movie. He really isn't as good that good in this movie. He's very, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So to so Ashton Kutcher, Stephen, he he he's uh, he play, he's very to a lot of both cameo. They they steal his Santa suit. It's used before the Santa suit scene. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's actually uh, in the trailer though. They show him in the trailer. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, all right, yeah. Like, it, look, I, I'll, I'll be the, the adjustment bureau is definitely the better movie, but Radio Games is so much fun because it's so dumb, uh, and it's just so like you know, like Gary Sinise is having having a lot of fun being the kind of like the very, I don't know, almost cartoonish villain, or or is it? Yeah, yeah. And then like the the twists are just absurd. So. Uh, I'm going to paint day games. Uh, yeah, and and Gary Sinise needs to come back to doing movies. I know he's been doing whatever NCIS or like whatever he's he's doing. Oh, he did see some new charity work. Frank, but that's been gone for a while, but uh, yeah, um. yeah. <laughs> he's doing a lot of charity yeah. work with uh, with uh, wounded warriors and stuff like that. Uh, I was say uh, <laughs> the, the, the Joe Bell with Mark Wahlberg, where he's walking for his son. He's in that. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you know, go. the Adjustment Bureau came out around the same time that Fringe was airing, and I always thought the uh, people that were, you know, behind all, you know, the people's destiny or whatever, following their plan, kind of looked like the uh, observers from... Uh, oh, yeah. The observers, those, the bald guys in, like, the other dimension or whatever <laughs> there. Yeah, <laughs> but, but we have Contagion. If we get Invictus, mm -hmm. so yeah, so uh, this time it'll be me first, and um, yeah, this one's kind of close. Like these are both really, really good. Like it's just funny how like when the pandemic hit, everyone went went and watched Contagion, which it makes sense, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a good way to freak yourself out. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but and uh, yeah, Invictus is is uh. Really great. 
Is it Morgan Freeman that that's playing? Uh, no, it's Lawrence yeah, Fishburne. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, right. it is Morgan Freeman. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But and yeah, like it's like really great. Oh, Invictus. Like, You're talking about yeah. Invictus. Yeah, and yeah. Nelson Mandela. Yeah, not so Morgan yeah. Freeman is Nelson Mandela. Lawrence Fishburne is in Contagion. Yeah, yeah, but but um, yeah, like it's kind of different too because it's a good sports movie about about the sport of rugby. Like I always thought that like rugby is going to be one of the most brutal sports out there. It's like full contact tackle, and you're not wearing any pads. You're just like just like laying it all out there on the line. So so yeah, that, I appreciate that. But but man, uh, uh, Contagion it, 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 it's just so so good. Even the face that like. Like one of the Paltrow she's making there, I just think about that that image, and it's kind of haunting when she gets like really sick like that. And I really like Jude Law's character being being the the like, contrarian guy, like like kind of like how it actually was during the pandemic. A lot of contrary people that, that like that, like just thought the government was just against us and all this stuff. So so yeah, I am gonna go with Contagion. Uh, uh Matt, what are you gonna go for? Uh, you might be frozen or muted. I'm not sure. Yeah, he said that I was off mute. his hot spot. My bad. I was... No, I, 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 uh, I have a mute on my mic. I just forgot to click oh, okay. it. Um, <laughs> cool. I, I, I like both of these movies. I'm actually going to go with Invictus here. Um, I think Clint Eastwood yeah. does a good job with this movie. One of his last, like, few good movies that he did. Uh, before he kind of started to go down a little bit he doesn't direct bad movies but you know like he's not yeah, where yeah. he was when he did gran torino and invictus so i'm gonna go with that yeah yeah well i've always wanted to like be on a set to like see how the way that he films because he does like like basically one take for like, everything so so it'll be kind of interesting like like people will be like do you think we should get, an, get a few more more i think no it's good just go with it. Just move on. Wrap it up, kid. Whatever. So, so yeah. But, but um, Stephen, you're gonna go for. Uh, I like Invictus, but I'll go with Contagion. Uh, much, uh, especially since it's uh, more topical uh, these days. Uh, yeah. I, I understand the fascination uh, that people had with watching this movie when the during the height of the pandemic. An outbreak. Yeah, yeah, yeah outbreak. Uh, I have to say, even though Contagion is probably is obviously the more realistic movie, Outbreak is more entertaining. Uh, but Contagion is still really good, so I'll go with Contagion. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, uh, Dan. I'm kind of with Matt. I really enjoy both of these movies. Matt Damon and Morgan Freeman are great as Invictus. One of these days, if I get back to Bleacher Features, Malcolm and I are going to do. Uh, uh, Invictus on Bleacher Features, but I'll tell you what, Steven Soder, you got to give him a lot of credit that he was able to make a movie 10 years before the actual event that basically it's almost mirroring what happens in Contagion, happens yeah. in, in real life. And I mean, everybody, Jude Law, Kate Winslet, that scene where when it's Paltrow, I mean, kicks the bucket and see Matt yeah. Damon's reaction. I mean, it was like it really hit hard back then in 2011 when it came out. And then, of course, 10 years later, after we all been through the pandemic, you're like, wow, this is real. You got to take this stuff seriously. You know what I mean? And, and, and Lawrence Fishburne. And I mean, it's a great movie. It's Soderbergh really at at the top of his game, in my opinion, and, and going back to like 2001, where he was just making Aaron Brockovich and, and, and those types of movies he was doing back then, you know what I mean? And he really br brought back his, his abilities to, the, to uh, Contagion to really make a great movie. And, and the fact, I think the fact that it, that it, what happened in that movie actually happened in real life 10 or 11 years later, it really hammers that movie home so hard that how good it really is, you know? So uh, definitely, Contagion for me. Yeah. Well, uh, Richie, what, what do you think? Yeah, Contagion is really good. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it, it is. 
it, it is weird watching now how accurate it is. But yeah, I also remember having a weird cast like Dimitri Martin shows up in this movie. It's like, all right, yeah. <laughs> it's all right cool. Dimitri Martin's in this. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm going to go with Invictus actually. I, I actually think it's one of the Clint Eastwood's like, you know, later, better movies. But yeah, and, and I agree that like he's sort of, I wouldn't say he's like lost a huge step. Like, the, the movies are fine, but they're not like as memorable as they have been. And I think he's getting more experimental, you know, with like, you know that that train that that, that that movie he did where he you know used the actual victims of a like a, a oh yeah that was terrible a, a ter terrorist attacks <laughs> as actors I'm like yeah that doesn't work and yeah <laughs> so uh yeah but like he he is counted as a director and yeah i think it, it would oh, as well as putting like folks on the you know uh you know how you know like the apartheid uh you know movement and then also uh you know the how how big uh sort of rugby unions was called like how big rugby union is you know how, you know as part of the you know culture in south africa it, i get think it, it put uh rugby union on in the kind of like uh, on a sort of uh well you know more more of a global scale because uh, you know i think it's, it's not not as popular everywhere obviously not in america but yeah it's it's a good it's a, it's a great movie so i'll go invictus yeah for some reason like i keep on dating these these girls sorry no offense sarah you might be be watching they they want to watch all these <laughs> these movies that are really bad and they become obsessed with, with them like my ex-wife was, was obsessed with with the 15 17 to paris or whatever that that, that was she was like like really yeah, wanted to see it. And, yeah. yeah and then and she really loved it and wanted to go back and see it another time in theaters and i hated it i'm like oh and then um sarah she was was uh, trying to recommend a bunch of horror movies the other day, and they're all like, like under thirty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Mostly, there's one or mm -hmm. or uh, two that were high, but it's because they only had maybe like ten reviews. Is one of those where it's on like ten people on Rotten Tomatoes. So I'm just like, oh. So we were, we're having a hard time like agreeing what we want. To walk even though we're we're long distance, we'll like sit on the phone and, and like do one of those long distance mm -hmm. couples things where we you know, watch a movie together while we're on the phone. It's the best we got. But. <laughs> but anyways, uh, JPO, what do you want to go for? Uh, yeah, simple, simple for me. Um, Contagion looked good, great cast, but I also didn't want to pair it on myself any more than I already am. Uh, even and that's going back before COVID. That's going back to when it was originally released. I didn't want to be paranoid. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Invictus is a, is a really nice uh, uh, real life tale. So, and I dug it, Invictus. Yeah, so it'll be Invictus. Movie. Oh, cool. Uh -huh. See, we still have Daredevil <laughs> going up against Interstellar. <laughs> I mean, uh, we can talk about it for sure. Uh, um, it'll be Matt first. So, what do you want to go for? Man, so we got a masterpiece among filmmaking, just groundbreaking stuff going up against Interstellar. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I kid. Right. <laughs> um, I'm going to go Interstellar. Um, I know Matt Damon is in it for like 0.5 seconds, but I mean, longer than that. Well, <laughs> Airdevil <laughs> is just <laughs> the, the theatrical version's not good. The director's cut is not terrible, but it's just not a good movie. The Interstellar. Yeah. <laughs> well, Steven? <laughs> I love Daredevil. It sucks that it's going up against Interstellar. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go with Daredevil since I obviously know which one is gonna win, and it probably should. But I but I do love Daredevil, uh, so I will show some love for Daredevil. I'll tell you right now. Um, I'm going to sure, go yeah. for Daredevil, and the, well, the, yeah. the reason is is that it doesn't matter if it's a director's cut or the regular theatrical cut. Ben Affleck's in it as Daredevil and Matt Murdock. He's in both versions. The director's cut is better, and as far as I'm concerned, Daredevil is a better movie than Interstellar. I just absolutely cannot stand Interstellar. I uh, I, uh, I I was I was on a previous one of these, and I couldn't believe everybody was like shit, throwing all this love into that. I think it's like one of the worst. No one movies he's ever done, and that role with Damon, oh, man. Arab, a terrible, he's terrible in Interstellar, uh, and and actually, I really enjoyed Ben Affleck. More likable. 
I, 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 it's getting, you know, John Favreau in there, you know, and everybody's, oh, the teeter totter. Who cares? How about Colin Farrell? He's awesome. How about Michael Clark Duncan? He's awesome. You know what I mean? These guys, this movie's a good movie. And whether it's the director's mm-hmm. cut or the other movie, I'm going dirty. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Richie, what do you think? Look, I won't go as far as I did. It was a good movie. And I <laughs> think the show was better. Oh, I'm not a huge fan of it either. I, I think it's fine. However, I'm going to use the logic. Ben Affleck, it, he, he's front and center in the movie. It, you know, he's not the worst part of the movie. Yeah, he's front and center in the movie. Matt Damon's in it for 20 seconds. So if you're doing, you know, like, there's more to judge here. So I, I'm going to go Daredevil for that reason. I can't believe that's going to might be Nick Stella <laughs> at Muggin Nuts. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't think I could. If we're doing Matt. Ben Affleck versus Matt. I can't go. I, I feel bad for Kevin. You know, I, I know that there was cam. You know, I voted for James Love and there were cameos, but like that was still. I think I was still memor- more memorable. You know, better than maybe Matt Damon was. You know, I don't know. I, yeah, at least, at least there was both of them in there. So I'll, I'll, I'll go Daredevil. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, JPO, you gonna go? Director's for- cut. This director's cut. Look how shiny and nice that is. Uh. Yeah, I, 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 I do have I have I have some I do have some love for Daredevil, man. Uh, it's got its problems, but there, there's something in there, including the performances, including Affleck. Uh, but yeah, I, well, it's not my favorite Nolan. I am going to give my vote to Interstellar, though. Um, I think there's also some really, really, really interesting elements, and it's shot very beautifully. I think you guys are also yeah. a little over exaggerating how little Matt Damon has is in it. Yeah, it's 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 one scene. It's a very lengthy scene. Plus, I'm going by. I am going He's by. In by it for movie like movie what? Ten minutes, minutes, something like that. Maybe. Yeah, but just. But, like, uh, yeah, and for me, like I, I don't know. Like I, I think that the Daredevil is fine. Like, like uh, my favorite character in the movie is probably Colin Farrell playing Bullseye. I thought, I think he's great. But then you have Michael Clark Duncan. He's uh, awesome, too. And, and Jennifer Garner, I mean, she looks pretty good in the suit. You know, I'm not going to lie about that. So, um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's it's all right. Like, I'm not going to say that it, it's a terrible uh, movie, but, like, it doesn't compare to to the, the, the Daredevil series that we got. Way better there. But, uh, but, yeah, like, I actually really love Interstellar. I, I think that it's great. I think that, it, that like, it's one – one of Nolan's best, in my opinion, because it's, it's one that like it might get a little convoluted near the the end, kind of like when it, when they go back through the black hole stuff. But but but, but like, does anyone know what what actually happens when when you enter a black hole? I don't know if there's anybody that actually knows that. So so I mean, like <laughs> like like who knows? So I mean, anything's possible. So and I think Matt Damon's actually. Gives a, a really great performance. He's a very unlikable character. Like you just want to punch him in the face because he's because he, like he only cares about about himself and his own interests. But but still, I'll i vote for Interstellar, sure. But I'm pretty sure that I know where where it's gonna go because we have a tie and it goes to Dan. So you can put <laughs> yes yes I get rid of Interstellar. Oh, I get revenge for that last <laughs> episode I was on where Interstellar. Yep. So much love, Daredevil. Move yeah. on, Daredevil. Thanks. All right, <laughs> might might be considered an upset. We'll see, but <laughs> oh but, yeah, I, we got, I think it definitely would be an upset. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Mm. We got we got smoking aces up against dazed and confused. So, <laughs> and um, this time I believe we go to I think it's Dan first. So. Me? Oh yeah. Oh god. Who, who? Which one of the two of them is in Smoking Aces? Ben Affleck. Uh, ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Affleck. I own the 4K of Smoking Aces, and I saw it in the theater. I just don't remember him being in it. I just remember a lot of Jeremy Piven. Uh, Something the- happens yeah. last way through. Wink, wink. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's not in it very long. Like he really doesn't have that much screen time in Smoking oh, okay. Aces. Okay. So, and I know Ben is in uh, Dazed and Confused, and he's in it. More, he's like a bully. He's like a bully in days. I would say screen time was. It's actually probably about even. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, about even. Um, of the two movies, I, I kind of like Days and Confused better. It reminds me of, of of some friends of mine that grew up in that era in the eighties and stuff. So I'm gonna go with uh, Days and Confused over Smoking Aces. I don't hate Smoking Aces. I like it, but I I rather go with Days and Confused. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, Richie, what do you think? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Days of Confused. I'm just. I've never been. I just saw the huge love for it as other people do. Spoken Ace is is good. I'm, I don't have like the huge love for it either. But uh, you know, it's fine. And yeah, like yeah, I, I think the screen time is about equal. But yeah, Ben Affleck's all right in a small role. Um, but I'm not, not enthusiastic either way. But Smoking Aces is all right, so I'll go Smoking Aces. Yeah, uh, GPO. What do you say? Uh, yeah, this is actually one I was able to get to for the first time, uh, as in days. I saw Smoking Aces way back when it first came out. Um, unrecognizable Chris Pine too. If you, if you want to look back, um, he's one of the three brothers. Jordan, did you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unrecognizable Pine. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. Got R-rated. I watched it for the first time. Whack- and I noticed that, yeah. yeah. Throw a bunch of wacky characters out at you, so, you know, it kind of fulfills that. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I like Days of Confused, and, of course, Richard Linklater. I think he, had, he has a good knack for, you know, he, he knew what he uh, he was doing, and it's it's a fun time frame movie here with a lot of great uh, people in it. Um, that, you know, of course, Matthew McConaughey's famous line and whatnot. So I dug it, and I think it's one I would go back to more, Days of Confused. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not a huge Jason Confused fan either. I watch it. I'm just kind of like bored. I just I don't know. I don't I don't really vibe with it that much. I watched Smoke and Aces for the the first time for this, and it was fine. Like, like I don't think that the the writing was all that strong because like I was a little confused as to what was even happening uh, for half the movie. Like what what the plot is and what everyone was, was going after. And like yeah, I was they're a throwing stopped. a shit ton at you. A lot of characters. And you're not really attached. To yeah, just yet. like a lot of characters. Yeah, right. But I do appreciate all the cool characters. They have some really cool characters, though. Like, they did the, that well. I'm a big character-driven guy. Like, like, I like Jason Bateman's character, too, kind of playing the drugged-out kind of weirdo guy. And then, like, yeah, um, uh, Chris Pine. And then I forget the name of the guy that's from Lost that's in there that, like, plays one of the henchmen in, like, Lost, too. That That's, like, like he's really good playing one of, one of those guys. And even Joel Edgerton's like a blinking you know, some character playing the yeah, he's, he, yeah, he German too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, you got some pretty cool and fun characters. I mean, uh, you have Ray Liotta in there, Jeremy Piven, Ryan Reynolds. So, I mean, yeah, I think that it's fun. But, like, I didn't love it the way that I, I thought that I would. But I do like it better than Days and Confused. So I'll go smoking Aces. Uh, Matt, what do you think? Um, Spoken Aces is pretty good, but I'm going to go with Days and Confused. Um, I have a blast every time I watch that movie, so I'm going to go with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Steven, what do you got? Honestly, I don't really care which one goes through because I'm not really big on either of them. But uh, I guess Smoking Aces I slightly enjoyed more, so I guess Smoking Aces. Yeah, sounds good. And uh, Dan, would you go Dan. first? I went first. Dan, Dan went first. Okay, so I picked Dan. And I think, uh, would you vote for Steven again? Smoking Aces. So uh, I believe we have a tie then. So yeah, and and, and the tie goes to Richie. So you want to want to go for? Ah, uh, Smoking Aces. One. Yeah, Smoking Aces, and this might be the last one on the side. Yep. All right, we'll see what we got on the other side. No, 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 I'm pretty good as far as our comments go. Like, I mean, if, it, if we keep them at the same pace, we'll be doing all right. Uh, let's see. We have the accountant going up against the sum of all fears. So, um, and it'll be Richie first. So, what do you Yeah, uh, I don't know. Some of all fears is all right. I don't know. I found it kind of boring. Uh, it's all in not memorable, but the accountant's really good. I, I really enjoy the accountant, and uh, you know I'm excited they're doing you know doing a sequel thing. Um, so yeah, and, uh, yeah, huh? <laughs> maybe a sequel. I mean, no, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought it was announced that they're in a sequel. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's yeah, been in the works for so long. I'm I'm being the thing. Probably not. Okay, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but but yeah, this was a surprise, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. Uh, yeah, I, I like uh, I like Kevin O'Connor. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the accountant, sure. Yeah, uh, JPO, what do you think? 
Yeah, this one's kind of easy-ish for me here. I didn't like some of the fears all that much here. I think it's it's just kind of a little. It was a little boring for me to be honest with you. The one time I watched it, account I, I really dug. I like the tale of their tone in here. One that does have suspense as well, but in a better way. Uh, J.K. Simmons and Bernthal Houston on the poster are also really good. That's why I wanted to see more of a sequel. I think there's stuff that we didn't even get into between him and Bernthal that would have been interesting to explore. But uh, the first one's still really good, and a catcher good too. Accountant. Yeah. Um. I actually, really like both of these movies. I think that they're they're both really solid. Um, and some of all fears, I, I think it's good. It does get a little slow in like in like some parts, but I still really like it. A good Jack Ryan movie, but but yeah, the accountant's great though. Like I think Ben Affleck gives a a, a great performance. I think he's like sort of like an autistic guy, like maybe or something with like OCD, something like that. But he, but, but he plays it really well. Like, I really like how he, he has this little trailer filled with, like, all the things people uh, give him for, like, payment because he, he doesn't want it to be, be tracked or anything. So he has, like, paintings and gold bars and then all this cool stuff. Uh, and then also, shout out J.K. Simmons. He's great in it, too. Uh, so, yeah, I'll go with the, the accountant. And, yeah, they're looking up something – on the sequel, I don't know if it's still happening, but when they announced it, they announced it with Gavin O'Connor returning and everything. So, so hopefully it'll happen. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, Matt, what are you gonna go for? Um, I'm gonna go with the accountant here. I like the sum of all fears, but the accountant is so good, man. Um, I'm really hoping we get that sequel sometime soon. So I'm gonna go with the accountant. Yeah. Um, Steven. Um, I'll show some love to the Sum of All Fears. I think they're both very solid movies. Um, I think I slightly prefer the Sum of All Fears, but I don't mind the accountant moving on either. They're good. they're both really good. Yeah, sounds good. I think, uh, I think uh, yeah, the Sum of yeah. All Fears is I think the Sum of All Fears is one of the weaker Jack Ryan films and uh, you know Matt, uh, ben Affleck is just phenomenal in The Accountant. I just think it's one of his best performances in his career. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, when I heard they were making a sequel, I was like, oh, please make a sequel of this. I cannot wait for this. But, uh, yeah, we haven't got that sequel yet. And I like Gavin O'Connor as a director. He's a really good director of sports movies. I love his sports movies. The Lord. But, uh, Lord. Yeah, so, um, yeah, The Accountant. Yeah. The Accountant is moving on, and it looks like they they announced the, the sequel to The Accountant about two years ago. Hasn't been a lot of movement on it since, so who knows? But uh, we have Still Water going up against Gone Girl. Whoa. So uh, that'll be JPO first. Uh, it's a good. Here's a good classic athlete v. David one. Um, Still Water yeah. from uh, Tom McCarthy, who did uh, Spotlight. Um, I, I like this one. I think it had a very sweet, simple ending. Um, you know, it's about a, a, a father willing to do anything, really uproot his life in order to save um, uh, his baby girl, played by Abigail Breslin, who's in jail in another country here. Some intrigue, and then later on about whether or not she even is totally innocent. And, um, yeah, kind of a simple, I thought, really good performance here by Damon, kind of under scene that year. Uh, but Gone Girl, I really freaking loved. And it's also really good, even from a rewatch standpoint, once you know the mystery, it's fun seeing it from a different angle as well. And he's fantastic in it. Pike absolutely kills it. So I got to go Gone Girl. Yeah. So um, Stillwater was one that I watched for this for the first time. And yeah, this movie was great. Like, like probably out of a, of all the movies that I watched for this, that, this is the one that I liked the most. And, and yeah, like I just like... Uh, man, Damon, just playing this like, it's like regular kind of, just like, like uh, just dude from the Midwest from Oklahoma, and and uh, he pulls off the accent really well, and I really like the way that it's uh, uh directed. Also, that they just show some, some little nuances, some kind of weird thing. You see him going to Sonic, and he just ordering. Like, yeah, let me get a cheese coney and some cheese tots and a cherry limeade or just, like, whatever. Stuff that, like, wouldn't really matter, just inconsequential. But it just makes me laugh the way that, that you just see Matt. Uh, I didn't even like, like doing some of these these small things. And then just, like, showing the lengths he's willing to go for his daughter, who, who was, like, 
uh, supposedly, I mean, like you decide after you watch the the movie, she was wrongly uh, in prison for for some things, but um, but yeah, but um, Gone Girl's great. Like I've already mentioned that I saw that after probably one of my worst breakups that I've ever had, and it actually worked really well to see that after see a movie about a crazy bitch <laughs> that like just like goes psycho on him and. And yeah, like I really like it because like, I like part of the movie like you're, you're against Ben Affleck and then you're with him and and like it's a really cool uh, a twist and uh, yeah, I think that it, it works really really well. I think Rosamund Pike. I don't know if she was nominated, but she should have been. Like she was great in it. So so uh, yeah, I've become a, a huge David Fincher fan. Like he's probably like in my top like like three or four directors all the time. Like I really love it. Uh, Fincher, so I got to go with Gone Girl. Uh, Matt, what do you got? Um, so Stillwater, I think, is fine. I don't think it's that bad of a movie. It's just, you know, it's a it's a decent little, you know, middle of the road type of movie. But for me, I'm gonna go with Gone Girl. Like easily, I'm going Gone Girl. Um, get a great performance from Ben Affleck from Rosamund Pike. Um, I thought she got nominated. Maybe I'm wrong, but I she did, thought I she was nominated. She might have been, yeah. That you know who right. wasn't? Ben, yeah, she those was. sons of bitches. Yeah. She was nominated. <laughs> um, but, yeah, she's great in the movie. Neil Patrick Harris is also good in the movie, too. Um, David Fincher is one of my favorite filmmakers, so I'm going to go with Gone Girl. Now, also, shout out uh, Tyler Perry. Like, he's really great he just plays a regular guy. He's not doing some weirdo character. So, so yeah, yeah. Like he needs to do just more of those. He's a good things. character actor. Yeah, absolutely. When he's yeah, someone else's script. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. But, but um, Stephen, which one you got? Haven't seen Stillwater, so I'll go with Gone Girl. Yeah. <laughs> um. Damn. Yeah. Everybody knows this. I hate Gone Girl. Um. I mean, I'm. <laughs> Uh, huh? I just absolutely cannot stand the story. I can't stand the concept of the movie. I just think it's a piece of Should garbage. Book, One of David Fincher's worst <laughs> movies he's directed. I, and I actually really, really enjoyed Sweetwater. I saw that a couple of years ago in, in the theater, and, I, and I really, really grabbed. I really Damn liked. Moves. I thought uh, Matt Damon was fantastic in it, and uh, yeah, I can't stand Gone Girl, so I'm going with Sweetwater. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, Richie. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I think I believe the Stillwater was a question in a recent trivia, wasn't it? Uh, what wasn't it, JPO? <laughs> oh, that, that, every every probably. league's probably done that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I have. I I don't think I've gotten around to it yet. It looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's Gone Girl. It was in one twenty eight. It rules. Uh, yeah, great performance all around. But yeah, Ben Affleck should have got nominated for something. But yeah, Rosamund Pike, I think, was one of the best performances of the last few few years. It, it was amazing. Uh, yeah, and uh, it, uh, yeah, while while we're highlighting performances, uh, shout out to Carrie Coon as well, who plays his uh, plays his sister, who's really good in mm. Yeah, so yeah, uh, so, yeah I love Girl. I think it's in my top one twenty also. So yeah, I'm your I, moving on. I might be with you guys on that. Yeah, we have extract going up against the rainmaker. So um, it'll be me yeah. first, and yeah, and I actually have never seen the rainmaker, but it, but I heard that it's like one of the first leading roles for Matt Damon. Like, you, like it's when he first got got like a big starring role, and <laughs> and, and I want to see it, and I want to read the the books also because my. My uh, parents, especially my, my dad, like like he has every single John Grisham book. He reads them all, so I'll just borrow it from him, and then I'll I'll read it and then see the movie probably. But but um, um extract though I think is is uh, great. Like like it's a really uh, cool movie from Mike Judge, and and like I really resonate with with Mike Judge. I love all his movies. I'm a big Beavis and Butthead guy. Like I just like love everything that. That he does, I think that that Jason Bateman, Mila Kunis, uh, she's great in it, and and then uh, Ben Affleck. I think he plays like a stoner guy. I think he plays a stoner guy. Like, it's really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's he's uh, pretty great in it. So yeah, I'm gonna vote for Extract. Yeah. 
Uh, Matt, what do you think? So I haven't seen either one of these movies, but I'm going to go Rainmaker because Ross in the comments said Rainmaker. So I'm going yeah. to assume <laughs> sure, yeah. that that is the it right is choice. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, you're you're influencing the votes, Ross. Um, I've always been a more Joey guy myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Could you be any more wrong? Yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, yeah, that or Chandler, but on um, mm. uh, um, Steven? Rainmaker is actually one of my favorite of the John Grisham adaptations. Uh, so I will go with the Rainmaker. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll uh, tell you what. I'm a big fan of the uh, John Grisham novels, and a lot of them really have translated into very, very good movies. And one of them in, is The Rainmaker. Danny DeVito is, I think, great. And John Voight is a villain, uh, is really good. Um, mm. and, and, and I'm a big courtroom drama fan, so, I mean, this is right up my alley. And Matt Damon was fantastic in The Rainmaker. And this is such an underrated movie. I'm Unfortunately, though, I haven't seen an extract, but I just know I love Rainmaker, so I'm just going with the Rainmaker. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, uh, Richie, would, would yeah, you uh, I mean, I picked extract when we did the best uh, you know, movies that me had appeared on tournament fights up to that point. Yeah, because it's really funny. Uh, yeah, like yeah. a lot of good, great characters. Yeah, J.K. Simmons in this as well. As uh, yeah, um, yeah, and it's, it's just really, really, really. Uh, Great movie, um, yeah, uh, and yeah, uh, you know Ben Affleck plays a, a stoner. He's got really in it. Yeah, he's got really great comedic, comedic timing. He's probably one of the highlights of the movie. So, and I haven't seen Rainmaker, so I'll go extra. Yeah, something I didn't even know that that Rainmaker is Francis Ford Coppola. So, so that's cool. Mm. Shout out, shout out yeah, that's right. Is uh, Mike Judge, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so, a uh, what do you got, JPO? Uh, I like abstract. I'll go ahead and confirm. To, in my opinion, Affleck is the best part of it. You know, I can see kind of why he signed up. You see, he's not even on the poster because I think he's kind of one of those like favorite roles because it's just a fun little smaller part. Um, but yeah, I really liked uh, Rainmaker, something I've seen more relatively recent in the last couple years. Um, I kind of miss Devito really ha- killing it in like the eighties and nineties. He was a great character actor. This yeah. isn't up anymore. And he's great in this as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go Rainmaker. I dug it. Yeah. So. The Rainmaker, moving on. Cool. Yeah, like we need Danny to be doing more movies. He's just doing like yeah. Movies. Lately, I've been like, oh shit, what happened? I like yeah. Andrew, everything he was popping up in for a while. He was so good. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, we got The Departed going up against the Last Duel. So uh, it'll be Matt first. So what you got? It's The Departed. Yep. <laughs> That's all you need to say. <laughs> uh, that's, that, 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 that's all. That's all you need to say. It's the, the pod. Yep. Yep. The, the pod. So, uh, Steven. Yeah, I haven't seen the last duel. The Departed. Yeah. Uh, Dan. I'll tell you what. The last duel is so freaking good. I mean, Matt Damon, Jody Comer, Adam Driver. It is such an underrated. People, I mean, that year they had uh, Ridley Scott had two movies out. You know, the the one with uh, Lady Gaga about the um, the fashion designer guy, and oh, and yeah. this and this one just completely went like under the radar. I mean, the production design on this is amazing, and and you know they split the movie into three stories, three three um, uh, ways of looking at the same story, and it was really a fantastic fantastic film but i mean what i mean i'm a huge scorsese fan and um i'm from boston obviously so i gotta go with the departed i mean it's it's my boys it's from beantown it's jack it's mark Wahlberg. it's matt damon it's leo i mean how could you not go best picture in 2006 i mean it was just uh, i gotta go with the departed and i'll tell you guys you gotta see the last duel fantastic fantastic film matter don't look at like rotten tomatoes and metacritic and all just watch it for yourself and i think you really enjoy it as, as a really great dramatic uh story and stuff period piece too yeah yeah for sure yeah uh uh richie what do you think 
Yeah, uh, I haven't seen the last two yet. I've heard really good things, so I'm hoping to get to that soon. But yeah, Departed, I really still like. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it was one of the best of the year it came out, 2006. It was re it's really, really good. I, it, it, I always bring up this trivia fact, but it is still weird to me that the only acting nomination that got was Matt Wahlberg. Yeah, is, uh, Mark Wahlberg. I, I, still, I, I think, like, while I like Matt Wahlberg as an actor, he's the lesser out of the three on that, po uh, you know, four on that poster. Well, so. funny. I think what it was is everybody... It's not even on the poster. He's so, he's funny. Poster, yeah. he's so funny in his role as Sergeant Digman, or uh, uh, is it Digman? Yeah, Digman, right? Yeah. And he he just yep. gives so many like memorable lines in the movie when he's when he's like talking to like what the hell is a blah blah blah, blah doing doing is this you know those roles those lines yeah. are just so <laughs> funny you just they're memorable you know and then he you know the fact that he gets the last laugh in the end you're like oh my god Wahlberg gets the last laugh in the end of all people so kind of. There's a reason why he ended up with that Oscar nomination, I think. Yeah, I just think yeah. he should have gone to Jack Nicholson or the other, or, 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 yeah, yeah, the other three. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, but but yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, the the I'll go to Departed for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, JPO. Uh, yeah, I feel like a very dirty athletic fan for not seeing Last Duel. Maybe it's just that time period that it's something that takes a lot for me to get to. But uh, I, I love The Departed here. It's, it's one of my top Scorsese's. Um, the whole cast, you guys already said uh, <laughs> the fun part about uh, uh, Wahlberg. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think Damon kills it. Uh, everyone kills it, man. Departed's fucking great, cocksuckers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I want to, real quick, if you guys haven't seen yeah. Infernal Affairs, which is what this is based on, and Infernal I Affairs is based on Internal Affairs with Richard Gere, I definitely recommend all of those <laughs> if, you, if you haven't seen any of those uh, leading up to The Departed, because they're all fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, that's definitely on my, my uh, list to watch. Yeah, Infernal Affairs. <laughs> but... <laughs> But, uh, oh, nice. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so I actually watched The Last Duel to prep for this. So so I, I did see it. And, and I will say, like, I, I started to have a little joke ready. I was like, The Last Duel It's the last time I want to see that last duel. So, but but actually, like, it got better as it it, it went on, actually. Like, the, the first part might might be a little slow, but, but then it just ramps up more and more as, as the movie goes. And you, and you learn the the story of what what happened to Matt Damon's wife. I forget the actress's name, but, but and then, yeah, Jody yeah. Cohen. Um, she's great in it too. And then, and then just seeing him go up against Adam driver and, and yeah. Uh, ben Affleck's maybe not in it quite so much, but he, but he's there. Like he, he pretty is, funny, but, right? But, yeah. But, but, um, but yeah, the part is great. Like it's it's not my favorite Scorsese movie. Like it barely. I don't know. Like like there's probably three or four that I, uh, Scorsese movies that I like better than this. But but I I do really like it, and I I think that that it just appeals to me a little more than the last duel. I'm not like like as much for period pieces like this. But 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 I did like it though. Like a. So uh, last of all, I like not not love the departed. I'm skewing more towards I I do love this movie, but I'm I'm still even that uh, for that one not quite there. But but I would vote for the departed here. So let's go to the departed. So yeah, so I think it'll be the departed. It's gonna depart its way to the second round. So um, we have Elysium going against Armageddon. <laughs> all right, uh, where's awesome when you need it? For Armageddon, like it's like one of his favorite guilty pleasure movies. But um, what is Steven first? Um, I like Elysium, but yeah, I, I love Armageddon, so I'll go with Armageddon. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm, a, yeah. I'm in the same boat. I actually I'm probably one of the few people that likes Elysium better than um, some of the other um, like. Uh, his first movie was uh, District 9 was great, but I actually liked Elysium. It kind of got crapped on a lot, but I actually did like Elysium yeah. a lot. Uh, um, Shelter Copley was really good, Jodie Foster. But how can you not, how can you go against Armageddon here, you know? 
uh, I mean, the songs <laughs> by Aerosmith or, or whatever, you know, Bruce Willis. I mean, it's just, just an iconic. It's part of what makes the 90s, you know, this kind of this action decade, you know, with a lot of these types of movies, Armageddon and the songs and and whatnot. I mean, hey, it's a criterion. Yeah, go get, go get that criterion, people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Richie. What, yeah, go uh, Lee seems okay. It's one, one of my lesser Neil Blomkamp movies, in my opinion. Jodie Foster's accent's really distracting. <laughs> I, I don't know yeah. what she's trying to do. Um, she's doing Dutch. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's not, I'm not just, I don't think it works. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you know, like those freaky dicky Dutch? Yeah, yeah. 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 Freaky, <laughs> Dutch. yeah. Smoking a pancake? Uh I don't speak uh, freaky dicky Dutch. Uh, no, yeah, but yeah, I'm again, I'm again rules. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. So that's my vote. We'll go. And I'm trying not to th- sing the song because I don't want yeah. you to get. I don't want you to get uh, like. Copyright. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, don't want to close my eyes. We'll just stop there. But uh, JPO. <laughs> Uh, I'll go ahead and give my vote to Elysium here. I do think it's a decent follow up. You know, I can see why it's not as loved as like a District Nine, but I, I still like the kind of the world they built, the performances, and as much I do have a lot of fun with Armageddon as well, but not as much fun to where I can't show some love to Elysium. Yeah, um, so I have seen both these movies except for with Elysium. I only seen half of it because for whatever reason I was watching it and then just life got in the way. I, wasn't able to finish it, and I just I, I need to go uh, back. But what I saw, I, I actually liked it quite a bit, actually. I'm a big Neil Blomkamp fan. Like, I, I'm going to defend things like like Chappie. And I stuff. like Chappie. And, I, I, didn't yeah. I like Chappie a lot. Like yeah, same here. Yeah. And also, I'm looking forward to so this next one. He's doing the Gran Turismo movie coming up this year. So, with, yeah. with oh, David Harbour. And, yeah. and it. And also Orlando Bloom's in it. So, yeah, like, I'll watch that. But um, hopefully it'll be a bit better than the Need for Speed movie, maybe. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Armageddon's great. Like, like this is just, like, a like great just kind of just um, turn your brain off. Just, like, like watch just, like, a like crazy disaster movie with a stacked cast. I mean, like, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, like, really cool characters. And, and like, see what you want about... about um, Michael Bay, but I mean, like, I actually really, uh, I dig this one here, and and yeah, the cast of, of characters are are great, and uh, Ben Affleck might be one of the best uh, actors in the movie. So let's go with Armageddon. Yeah, uh, Matt, what, what do you think? Fair. I will go Armageddon. Mm. So I'll I go Armageddon that barely. Yeah, I believe it, that it's Armageddon. I don't think it's a tie. I think it's barely Armageddon. So Armageddon takes it. Uh, we have Ford v. Ferrari going up against the town. Ooh. Oh, wow. This is a right, right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I can't remember who's up next. Hey. I think it's. Hey. Dan. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh that sounds right. <laughs> I freaking love Ford v Ferrari. I love this movie. I think it was like fourth or fifth on my top ten of that year. But I, I can't vote against the town. I think the town is amazing. You know, we're gonna rob the uh, Cathedral of Boston, Fenway Park, my freaking home. I'm wearing the jersey, the yeah. Boston Red Sox. I think it was the last thing I ever saw Pete Popple sweat in, and he's a mm. great character actor. Jeremy Renner, whatever. I mean, you know, I heard a story recently about how Matt Damon, they couldn't cast Matt Damon in this because he was going to cost too much money and they couldn't make the movie. I was like, wow, that's crazy to hear that story. Right. I guess he was making a lot of money at that time. They couldn't afford to pay for him. But, uh, oh, I, I freaking, I mean, uh. John Hamm, right after Mad Men, John Hamm was in this. And he was fantastic. I mean, yeah. and, and Blake Lively, I'll tell you what, all the people... You don't know Blake Lyle. She is a freaking great actress when she's got a, a role, and she's fantastic as a as a as a crack addict with a child, and a, just she's got 
she's got issues yeah. in this movie, but uh, <laughs> I got the best role for you, Blake. It's a crack addict with a child. I think you would be good for it. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. good in the role. I mean, I I, I thought she was really effective. Coming, I mean, she came across really good as this as this crack addict mother with, you know, but uh, also Rachel. Uh, uh, <laughs> What's yeah. her name? Hall. Uh, Rebecca Hall is fantastic in it. You know, you would if you didn't know Rebecca Hall, she's British. Oh, yeah. She doesn't even sound like oh. British in this. I, I love the town. I freaking love the town. Uh, I got to go for yeah. the town. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Richie, uh, isn't, isn't the town one that uh, Chris Scott had on was like the worst of thing that we did? Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, we he, did like we did the what, and then yeah, have the town pop up on that. <laughs> But what's that doing there? What, yeah, what is this doing there? He's like really weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, the town. <laughs> the Kowalski. How does he hate the town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no yeah, yeah. The the, 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 the town rules. Uh, I haven't. I haven't yet to see. I need to watch for free Ferrari, and I need to get to it. Uh, but the town is really good, and yeah, it's probably Blake Lively's better better, better performance. And she, she she is really. I think she. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just a, her Rolls voices, but yeah, she she was sort of like maybe unfairly labelled as not a great actress, but I think it's just the role she was choosing. Um, but yeah, like she's great in the town, she's great in a simple favour, but yeah, 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 she's yeah, but like yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, all the cast is great in this movie. Um, yeah, and it, it it rules. So yeah, uh, I'll go the town. Yeah, uh, a GPO. What do you think? Uh, this this is one of the toughest ones here, man. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna try, I'm just gonna leave it up to the rest of you. I'm gonna say for Ferrari, give it a shot. But I don't mind if the time goes through. God, I love I love both of these. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, for me, like I think for Ferrari is good, but I think it gets overhyped a little bit for me. Like like people were like saying that's like the the best of the year, or, like and I think that it was nominated for best picture. I think right, but. But like even still, like I not, like I think that it's good. It's still good, but but it just doesn't really strike me as like a best picture of that that year. But the town, yeah, the town is freaking phenomenal. I love this movie, and it's one that that really surprised me because I wasn't sure how uh, Ben Affleck was going to be it as a director, and he killed it in this thing. And and yeah, like like really cool, like like, like people always always talk about he as like one of the the best uh, bank robbery scenes, but this one's is uh, pretty awesome too. I mean, I mean, it, it may rival that one in some ways. I mean, but but, but yeah, just the way that the, that it plays out. And yeah, uh, I'm with you guys with with Blake Lively too. She's great in this, and and yeah, just everyone: John Hamm, Jeremy Renner, like Ben Affleck, all of them. So yeah, let's go with the town, uh, Matt. I'm going to go with the town. I can barely hear you guys. It's super glitchy, but I am using YouTube to listen and uh, kind of okay. get an idea of when it's my turn to go. So uh, I'm going to go to the town. Yeah. Well, you're coming through pretty clear, actually, so that's good. <laughs> but I'm um, Steven. <laughs> Ford v. Ferrari. Ooh, so I th- a little love for Ford before I would be the town. Moving on. Right. Then we still have the Brothers Grimm going up against Downsizing. Okay. okay. Two kind of interesting movies. Um, wow. This and, is hard in a different um, level. Yeah, right. In a, a, a totally different way. So, uh, Richie, you're up first. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, Brothers Grimm like you know i i like matt damon and heath ledger but yeah um yeah it's not great it, there's some enjoyment here but it's not a great movie kind of boring and downsizing kind of the similar way it's not great but i like the concept here i, I do like the concept so i guess because i because the maybe it's a great great concept just the execution's not good i mean that could be a trying to form a fight where great concept execution not great um so <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll go downsizing. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, JPO, what do you think? Uh, yeah, this is different in another way because these are both kind of mid. I don't hate either one, but at the same time, it's another one I've kind of gone back to. I think downsizing just 
it's not necessarily his fault. The advertisement has kind of this this you know one note joke, and then ends up trying to be more serious. But I, even in the movie itself, I don't think it totally works. Brothers game, I would say probably a little bit more fun with. So um, I think it just it's a little more coherent. So I'm gonna say Brothers game. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, this was kind of interesting too. That I'm with you guys. Yeah, they're both both kind of mid. They're not not terrible, not great because. Because I think downsizing had a lot of potential, but like just halfway through it, it becomes a totally different movie. Like it just, I don't know, like it, it, it just really weird. Like I was really digging it, and then it just becomes something else. And I'm just like, like oh, like what happened to this movie that was really good? So, um, but the Brothers Grimm, yeah, I think that it, that there's fun to be had the whole way through. And I, I'm, I really miss Heath Ledger because just imagine, like if if he would was still uh, been alive, he probably would have been. Been winning Oscars and like I don't know, like I just feel that that like after the the Joker. I mean, like he kind of had like a maybe not like you wouldn't think that and, and until he he did the the uh, uh, Joker. So I mean, oh no, and he again, he back anyway, mountain. Broke back mountain. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did a couple of them. Yeah, so so yeah, but but yeah, so I probably have a little more fun with with the brothers Grimm. It's not on that. These aren't two that I really ever go back to, really. But I mean, I'll vote for the brothers Grimm. But, uh, Matt, what do you think? All right. Uh, I do not like downsizing at all. Uh, I thought the idea was pretty, uh, pretty cool, but I just think the execution was pretty bad. Uh, Brothers Grimm is, it's mid, like pretty much everybody's saying. It's just a mid movie. So I'll, I'll go with that. I mean, at least it's somewhat enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Steven, I haven't seen downsizing, but uh, and I always thought it looked good from the trailer. And the Brothers Grimm is eh. so I'll for one of the few times I'll go with when I haven't seen it. Yeah, so you said downsizing, you kind of went underwater there for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> downsizing. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> and Dan, what do you think? Are you there, Dan? Uh, I don't know if he's there or if he's frozen. Dan? Yeah, he's Dan? Just a live uh, show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're not really seeing or we see you. We just don't really hear you. So you may want to bump off and, and come back on. But but I think either way, it's going to be Brothers Grimm is what it sounds like. So <laughs> it'll be that. But but um, Matt, I don't know if you want to try to stick around more if your internet's getting too wonky, you want to jump off, but it's kind of, I'll leave that up to you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think he's having a hard time hearing us, so <laughs> we'll just move to the next one. <laughs> uh, but uh, we have Changing Lanes up against Ocean's Eleven, so. Sorry, I was listening to YouTube to see what you were saying, because like I said, on my end, it's like super glitchy, but I pull up YouTube and it, it works perfect and everybody sounds great, including me. Um, okay, but I probably well, should I mean, hop able to do it that one. Oh, sure, yeah. I, I say I probably should hop off because it's just going to cause a delay, and I think it, it will just make everything longer um, if I listen sure, to YouTube yeah. and then unmute myself when it's my turn. So I'm gonna hop off. Plus, sure. I do have to get up somewhat early tomorrow, like you know, yeah, yeah. nine o'clock. So uh, for you Easter have any plug stuff. you want to do it uh, real quick before you go? Um, the plug season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Um, so if you're into football, I'm on Inside the Horseshoe podcast. Um, I haven't uploaded in a little bit, but next week I'm getting better internet, so I'll be back to doing that. And then I also have my uh, personal channel where I talk about movies and do some reactions. That is Grab the Remote on YouTube. And um, I'm also on TMG. You know, it's my... Uh, it's my channel, but obviously that's where Battleground is. And um, I'm usually on Battleground Casual as long as my internet doesn't crap. So that's where you guys can find me. Nice. Well, thanks again, Matt, for jumping on with us. Have a good All right. one. All right. No problem. You guys have a good one. Yeah. yeah. See ya. All right. I kind of thought that the two guys with the that might have internet issues at the same time. Yeah. Well, but yeah. that's It'll fine. <laughs> 
I imagine Dan might might try to jump back in in a minute, but yeah, we'll we'll do this matchup here. So we'll go to JPO first for changing lanes and Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, this is actually I, I, a little hard as well. I like changing lanes. I think this one actually the uh, you know the drama added actually does work well here. Really nice kind of just two guys that aren't necessarily either one of them's. Ne not necessarily the hero or the villain here. They're kind of both wrong, but like they both also kind of, you know, I mean, just having a bad day and wrong place, wrong time kind of situations. Um, Ocean's 11, though. Uh, it's not 12. So if it was 12, changing lanes by far, but it's 11. So I'm going to say I'll give it to 11. I, I had a lot of fun with the uh, first and third one. Yeah. I think, yeah, for me, I've seen uh, both of these and, and like, Changing lanes was just kind of weird. It's just like about a car accident, and then and then like the the whole thing with it, with the where like one suing the other one, and like I don't know, like it didn't really do a lot for me. I just kind of thought thought that it was fine, and it didn't really uh, blow me away or anything. I actually uh, probably expected a little more from it. <laughs> Maybe that's not necessarily a, a good thing. I'm trying to expect less from my movies, but but um, oceans. 11 is is great yeah like got a really awesome cast here i mean with with uh matt matt uh, damon you got brad pitt you got uh george clooney in there you got uh, uh julia roberts you got a, a really stacked cast and like it worked really good at the with 11. yeah yeah don uh, 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 uh cheeto like what the heck he should be freaking credit i think i think that was that. <laughs> i think my, I think that was his. I think JP Evans was sorry about that, but yeah, I think. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. But like his choice, he didn't want to be credited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh, interesting. But, but yeah, um, so I'll go with with, with um, Ocean's Eleven. I, I think it's the best of the whole series. So, um, uh, Stephen, what do you think? Um, I think Changing Lanes is one of Ben Affleck's best performances. I think it's it's a great movie, so I'll go with Changing Lanes. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Uh, and uh, Richie, uh, yeah, Changing Lanes is good. I think it's underrated, but yeah, Ocean's Eleven is in Y one twenty eight. I think it's a great remake. Um, I mean, it, it only has to be all right to be a better, uh, it, you know, it's a better remake than the original. The original is pretty, pretty boring to be honest. Um, you know, the Frank Sinatra one. Uh, yeah, I had to, I had to watch it for a uh, feature presentation. Remember that channel? Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, it was um, yeah, not fun. And then while Amaru, he was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll watch these movies, and then you can watch that one." I didn't realize that he wasn't doing me a favor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Amaru, I like you. But uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we did a team smash. Uh, but uh, uh, but yeah, yeah but like, I, I love Ocean's Eleven. It holds up. It's great. So I'll go Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, yeah. Ocean's Eleven was will uh, take it, and also when your internet's not not quite enough to be on screen, Matt's just uh, joining us in the the chat, so he's there in the, in the chat. What's up, Matt? <laughs> um, but let's see. Up next, we have Informant up against Geely. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I mean, All right. put through the Informant, unless anyone wants to to talk about. Oh, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the Informant Especially either, not. but like, yeah, I guess it's I'm not either, good. but. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like it. It's way better than Geely. It's one Geely's one in, like known to be one of the worst movies of, of all time. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll just move right on past that one. We have Bounce, Bounce <laughs> up against The Martian. <laughs> okay, uh, could probably same on The Martian, but I mean, unless anyone wants to to talk about Bounce, <laughs> I I don't even kind of remember if I've seen this movie. Uh, I've never uh, seen I remember it. Remember coming out, but yeah, The Martian is great. One of my favorite Ridley Scott movies. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's great. I go back and forth on on which one I like more, the The Martian versus Interstellar. I may lean to, towards The Martian a little bit, maybe. But but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and The Martian has a great um, um, soundtrack too. That, that all that seventies music that like, supposedly his character in the movie hates that. That music, but he's stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got Batman v yeah, Superman, Superman, Dawn of Justice, live going up again to live by night. <laughs> so, we could probably talk about it. I don't know anything about Live by Night. I've never seen it. So, uh, 
but we'll go to Steven. You. Oh, no, Steven. Oh, it's me first? Yeah, Who's yeah, you? that's right. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I haven't seen Live by Night. I've seen Batman v Superman. And you can just, like, like talk about whichever one you, you want if you want to talk about the director's cut or, or just the regular. Either way, we only have one, Batman v Superman. And then I think that the that the first one – before they they came out with the director's cut, like I thought that it got got really unfairly kind of crapped all over. Like I thought that it was still good. I mean, I didn't I didn't think that there was a, a bad new at all. But the but the director's cut it just adds so much. It adds like like just everything like the perfect way to just make this movie just so much better. And and yeah, I think that that Ben Affleck is a great Batman. Like like maybe like. Like in my mind, like maybe the best Batman that we we've ever had. I mean, it's a toss up between um uh, him and Michael Keaton for me. I'm a big Keaton guy, but I mean, yeah, it's just it's just kind of like 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 flip a coin for me. But um, and yeah, I think that it that it, uh, it works really well for the uh, director's cut for me. So I'll go Batman v Superman. Uh, Steven? Haven't seen Live by Night, so Batman v Superman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Richie. Yeah, so Live by Night is uh, directed by Ben Affleck. It's one of his less, you know, it's probably one of his only like missteps as a director. It's not as good. It's not horrible by any means. It's just forgettable. Uh, and it bombs really badly. Uh, yeah, so I, and I don't think he's, has he directed something since then? I don't know. Um, but um, Yeah, he directed Air. Oh, you're not good air. You're duh. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> shut, shut up. Oh, okay. It's been a long, po- been a long podcast. Yeah, oh, I forgot it. that, that like, he actually directed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he directed air. But, you know, it, it was a long time between drink. It had been a long time between films. So, yeah, the, the, this wasn't a great, yeah. I, I think I think this was the, this kind of really, yeah, I, I, I do, do think this kind of did affect him a bit, though the the, the how unsuccessful the film was. Um, yeah, and but but it's not a bad film. You know, I mean, it's just not as definitely not as good as uh, has the rest of his uh, filmography and what we come to expect of Ben Affleck as a director. But yeah, and I'm not a huge fan of Batman v Superman, but there's enough there to enjoy. So I'll go Batman v Superman. Yeah, yeah, uh, JPO. What do you think? Uh, Richie said pretty much what I said. Yeah, this is kind of Affleck's only slight misstep here. It's just kind of forgettable, and like it just never kind of quite grabs you as you wanted to. <laughs> and I agree with you. And then I think Affleck's a great Bruce Wayne, great Batman. Um, well, I don't love it. I definitely do uh, like a lot of aspects of it, including Affleck himself for sure. So uh, Batman v Superman. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we'll go back to uh, Dan since you, you had to drop out for a second. We got. That would be Superman versus Live by Night. What do you want to go for? Yeah, my my phone died. It said I had ten percent, but apparently it, it died on me. It, it oh, okay. I think it overheated or something. But yeah, I'm just definitely yeah. going with Batman versus Superman here. This is, of all the Ben Affleck movies that he directed, this is the worst one. But he was also going through a tough time in his life while he was making this one. I think I think he he kind of made some bad decisions when it came to making this movie as a whole, um, you know, and uh, Batman vs. Superman, I think, is a great, great, great film. And despite what people think uh, about the, the whole Martha thing and all that stuff, I think it's a great film. And I, it really helped. Why did you say I that? Mean, yeah. yeah, whatever. <laughs> who cares? Uh, I think it's a great <laughs> film. And, and I think uh, he's great as Batman. I think he was a very good choice as as Batman, and I really definitely would go for uh, Batman versus Superman here. You guys remember the uh, yeah. the guy that was like, "Leave Britney alone." I did the same thing for Ben, you know, during his stuff. Oh, yeah. like, Leave <laughs> Affleck <laughs> alone. Chris, <laughs> yeah, Chris Crocker was his name. <laughs> oh, sorry, I can't no, believe, no I, can't believe I, I, I can't believe I, re- I remember that. <laughs> yeah, why do you remember that? Yeah, that is true though. Yeah, that is that is. I remember it too, but but like, are we going to get a little cameo of, from Affleck in, in the Flash? At, yeah, yeah, he's in the on... trailer. He's for sure in it. Yeah, that's him on the bike, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, no, I mean, you but... straight up see him like talking to him at one point too. Like it's definitely Affleck. Like... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's in. Yeah. Well. Well. Cool. It sounds good. But but Stephen, what are you gonna go for? I already voted. Oh yeah, you were first. Okay. Cool. Cool. 
I forget who the was first. So that was I didn't miss any while I was uh, gone. Yeah. I didn't miss any of the, of the boats while I was gone. Uh, uh, two, one, happened. you missed the... Oh. Uh, oh the bounce of the march. The march moved on. Okay, good. Yeah, it was, All right, the march moved on. Good. <laughs> good. The four, oh, I missed two. Oh, you guys did it... Uh, What's going on now? Uh, yeah. I have no what? idea. Now you're sideways. Oh, <laughs> man. Not Try to go again. like this to see it. But but then Ocean's Eleven and Changing Lanes. Oh, yeah. I missed a couple of hours being, it. too. Uh, uh, B- Bounces, by the way, uh, kind of a sweet film. He he, he uh, trades uh, airplane seats with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's husband who ends up dying on the on the plane by a crash, and he gets to know her without telling her how he why he went to see her. It's kind of a sweet movie. Oh, okay. Right movie went through the yeah. I never I never seen it, so that's cool. Um, yeah, but I, we we have Jason Bourne up against Courage Under Fire. And we'll see. I thought Dan just turned sideways, but he looks frozen now. So he's um, frozen. That's why oh, yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, right. <laughs> or he's really good at like playing a statue. Uh at JPO, you'll you'll be first, so yeah, uh, Jason Bourne, it's just one of those, like, it's a disappointing sequel. It's not bad, but at the same time, I was like, all right, they came back for a reason. This thing's going to rule. <laughs> and it came out, and I was like, all right, they, they came back to make a movie that's probably not as good as the first three. Still not bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not in the Zoolander territory, but it's in the disappointment territory. Um, maybe better than the last Matrix, but kind of in that territory of like, oh, he came back for this, huh? Uh, so I'm going to uh, give yeah. it a curse under fire. <laughs> Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but uh, I, I think I do remember liking it more than uh, Jason Bourne had grabbed me a little bit more. Yeah, and for anyone who might be be curious, uh, Curtain Under Fire is for Matt Damon. He's in it, so. Uh, Hell yeah, Damon. Yeah, but Stephen, what do you think? I think Jason Bourne is underrated, and that's actually one of my it's 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 up there for me for the in the Bourne franchise, but. Courage Under Fire is a great movie, so I'm going to go with Courage Under Fire. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Richie. Yeah, I didn't love or hate Jason Bourne. It's just mid and kind of disappointing and more, not what I was expecting from a Bourne film. And it, you know, it didn't, didn't meet my expectations. And Courage Under Fire is a good film so and better than Jason Bourne, so I'll go Courage Under Fire. Yeah, for some reason I skipped over myself. I don't know why I did that. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, did you already go? Yeah. Other Jordan, yeah, he went already. So, um, yeah, uh, I haven't seen yeah, Courage Under Fire. Fire. Yeah, but eventually I want to get around to it because I want to see everything Denzel's done eventually. But I just haven't seen that that one yet. Uh, but with Meg Ryan and like and. Uh, Denzel, like I'm a big fan of like what what Meg Ryan was doing in the '90s, like which, even in the '80s too. So, but yeah, Jason Bourne, like I would agree. I, I think that it's it's uh, kind of underrated. Like I, I really like seeing him just running around Las Vegas. I think it, it's fun, but like it's not quite on the level of the other three. But but I think it's it's still good. So I'll go Jason Bourne, and I believe we have a tie. Hi. Yeah. I think it, it goes to me now, right? Do you have a tiebreaker, JPO? I think you. I, don't, I have not. And I'll no. go to you then. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, no, I trust. <clears throat> I could be swayed, but the courage under fire. Yeah. <laughs> courage under fire. That, yeah. That's fair. I'm not going to die on that Jason Bourne Hill. <laughs> um, we, got, we got Ocean's 12. Mm-hmm. Event Argo. Uh, easy. Go fuck yourself. Uh, uh, and it is Steven first. So what do you got? I think I know where this is going to go, so I'll go with Ocean's 12, which is a fun movie. You're high as a kite, David Webb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love well, I love the scene where Tess... You, you contrarian bastard. <laughs> I, I love yeah. the scene where Tess... Uh, uh, pretends to be Julia Roberts. I thought that was a fun scene. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, uh, Dan, you're you here just in time for Ocean's Twelve and Argo. What do you want to go for? Yeah, unfortunately, guys, I think the worst of the Ocean's trilogy is Ocean's Twelve, and I think 
Argo is probably the best movie Ben Affleck has ever directed in his entire career, even though he didn't get an Oscar for it, which was Highway Fucking Robbery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he nuts. did I mean, this picture. So, you know, this is what, you know, with that these days when, nominated when, on like every other award show is it, except for the oscars is that come on yeah yeah so that's what you say when you when when you think about the uh, oscars and, and and ben affleck not getting uh nominated for best director you say our oscars academy go Ar- argo fuck yourself that's what you kind of say to him but uh yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah argo here all yeah. day every day yeah uh uh, Richie, what do you think? Yeah, Ocean's Twelve's kind of boring, um, which is you know kind of a feat in itself because uh, you know an Ocean's movie shouldn't be boring. It's quite its own quite premise, but they they manage it, and Argo is really good. And yes, Ben Affleck should have been nominated for Best Director. He should have won Best Director. Uh, so yeah, it's one of the, if we go through biggest Oscar snubs, that's probably one of the, that'd be what I thought. Yeah. Of- I thought Catherine uh, Bigelow was a bigger snub that year than Ben Affleck. <laughs> you're always going, I, I, love, I love you, Stephen, but you're always like, I actually know this. I, it's a, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I think Zero Dark Thirty is a better movie than Argo. Yeah. <laughs> you, you and Malcolm should do Well, the Academy doesn't podcast. agree with you on that because they gave Argo the best picture, so they don't agree with you. <laughs> you and yeah, Malcolm have your own podcast. Your own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, well, actually, no, well, actually, with yeah. Steven, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna go, uh, I'll go. yeah, uh, JPO, what do you think? <laughs> Ocean's 12 is easily disliked as the least favorite. Even a Don Sheetle in an interview was like, People, if you ever see me at, a, at, at an airport or in a restaurant. You don't have to tell me how you didn't like Ocean's 12. I've heard it. Like, he's actually had to say that before. Because, like, it's happened enough to where he has to say out loud, please don't tell me you didn't like Ocean's 12. I don't need to hear it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, it's a misstep of the three here. Uh, it's a it's a weird, it's a weird sequel. Which luckily had a better follow-up. Uh, Argo is great. It's absolutely a travesty. The, if the Academy thinks you're the best movie of the year, how the hell can it not at least give the director a nod? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, that, that truly does show they just for whatever reason, whether it's just the headlines or what he's done before, they just didn't want to give the Shigley guy a nomination, I guess. I don't know. It's stupid. <laughs> but Argo's a great film here, man. I love its suspense. It's movies with a little bit of movie making in the movie, which I always enjoy, too. Affleck himself is great in it. Got a great surrounding cast. A good premise based on a real story. Argo, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ocean's 12, like, I am just not a fan of that movie. And, like, I, I've yet to be a fan of uh, really any movie about an art heist like like every movie about an art heist i haven't liked so that i've ever seen so um and yeah like it just gets kind of meta like it, it has weird music at like the weirdest times and they're just doing i don't know like it's just it, it's just all over the place for me uh but, but but yeah i mean argo like i will say that it's it's probably not like a, a jordan style movie especially like like on paper when you like read about it but it was pretty decent i mean like i actually really dig the 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 cast i mean uh you also have john goodman alan arkin and brian cranston in there it's all kind of about the the iran contra i think that's what it is they're like the the like uh the hostages in iran so so yeah uh i'll vote for argo yeah check so, out american animals that's Argo. a great underrated uh heist uh, heist movie like a oh yeah oh yeah it's See a great that one. i haven't seen it so so yeah <laughs> didn't like that the other one that had it that also had john goodman in it or whatever <laughs> uh the monuments man yeah ooh. yeah no one like that uh, we got pearl harbor versus state of play <laughs> that, that, uh, that might be lucky <laughs> because <of it. laughs> anyway. yeah yeah <laughs> so this time it'll be dan first what are you gonna go for state of play is that is that got russell crowe in it yeah yep. that's on the front <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right um what is it is it like it's like a government kind of like type of thing with with government yeah government and, like like kind of political thriller conspiracy kind of thing yeah yeah I, I just it's hard for me to remember everything i saw i remember seeing state of play i just don't remember what the hell it's about but that being <laughs> yeah. no, i feel you i'm with you too. I'm just something about not, a murder within like the 
like uh, politics. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought it was about, but I'll be honest with you guys. I am not the biggest fan of Pearl Harbor. Uh, I, and I know Jordan's That's blasphemy. How can you, I just am not, I mean, Michael <laughs> Bay is a world war two movie and it's, it's I don't it's I don't know I don't know what he was going for with this movie and I really was looking for it was like one of those oh my god Michael Bay's doing World War Two and it's Pearl Harbor oh this is going to be great and then it was this other thing and um, so just because I'm not the biggest fan of Pearl Harbor I'm going to go with State of Play yeah <laughs> uh, Richie. I don't think it's a travesty not to like Pearl Harbor. This movie sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, it was just like, oh, let's take a, a very, you know, like a, a tragic story and then, like, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll make a, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do a love triangle instead. They yeah. shoehorned a, lo- yeah. a romantic angle in there. R- yeah. rom- r- romance instead. It's been stupid. Uh, and I mean, done you that wanted to be too panic. What's that? They want it to be Titanic. Yeah, want it to be Titanic. Yeah, there's right. a, yeah, there's a couple of movies that did that too. Like, I mean, Pain and Gain, that was a serious story. Yeah, he did it in Pain and Gain, so that's a serious story, and they made it into a comedy. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he, he tends to have, he has a tendency to do this sort of, uh, kind of thing where the, the, the tone is uh, way off. Uh, yeah, State of Play is very underrated. It, it's a, a great performance there by uh, Ben Affleck, and it's got a great cast. Helen, uh, yeah, uh, Helen Mirren, uh, it, Rachel McAdams, uh, yeah, Russell Crowe is always really, really good. And so, yeah, that's state, state of play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, JPO. Yeah, I'm with it. Kind of easy here. Uh, Pearl Harbor, yeah, long, sappy, doesn't totally work for me, not something... I rushed to, not something I would ever rush back to. Uh, say to play, um, yeah, it's, it's been a while. I definitely don't remember tons about it, but I do remember definitely sufficing at the time and being a nice little kind of intrigue. You know, who can you really trust? You know, Ben Affleck seems like the nice, good friend. Maybe he's up to no good. Who knows? And a great surrounding cast around it, too. I actually did like it at the time. I just remember I did like it. So say to play definitely gets my vote. Yeah, like I actually... I'm a big fan of State of, of Play. It's in this movie like, like four or five times. I think that it, that's great. And and Pearl Harbor, yeah, like it's. I mean, it could be fun if you just like, like, uh, I, uh, turn off the sound and just watch the action scenes and the visuals and stuff. I'm I'm fine with that. Even with the sound on, just skip over the the whole love triangle stuff. And, and maybe there's a movie to be had. Maybe someone's edited it, like a like cut of it just for fun. That's like. Makes it a better movie. <laughs> I'm sure there's something on YouTube or something, but but um, but State of Play, I think that's great because like you also have with like Rich McAdams, Helen Mirren, and Russell Crowe and all that. You got Jason Bateman in there. You got Robin Wright, Viola Davis, Jeff Daniels. Like this, it's a stacked cast, and I think that's a really cool, just kind of like political thriller that that like uh, uh, political thrillers don't always work for me. I, like they're there's like some of them that just get way too convoluted and and, and like just kind of don't keep my uh, attention as much. This one actually really works, uh, and yeah, I think that's that's fun. So yeah, I'll, I'll go through the play pretty easy. I'm Steven. Um, yeah, I'll go with state of play. Yeah, state of play. Moving on, All right. Uh, we have Stuck on You. <laughs> Here you go. From Matt, Matt I'm going to, I'm going to the Good Shepherd. So. <laughs> it looks like it's a, like a post that's half loaded. Can but, we push this through, guys? Yeah, that's can what it looks push, like. Can we just push the Good I mean, Shepherd through, please? You just uh, put the Good I, Shepherd I, through. I've never seen it. I've got my takes on it. Anyway. Yeah, I've heard the Good Shepherd. Like, when I looked it up, it got mediocre re- reviews when I looked it up, but. I don't know. It's it's way better than stuck on you. I don't know. Yeah. Come on. Well, uh, what do you think, Richie? <laughs> oh, my, no, no, be up first anyway. I, 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 yeah. I, I think stuck on you is like a guilty pleasure. It's weird that Matt Damon agreed to do this movie. It's not something he would usually do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like, like about conjoined twins and stuff. It's it's dumb. Uh, you, uh, it's not a great movie. You can have fun with it. Good Shepherd is quite slow. It's not something I'd watch multiple times. 
Um, it's directed by Robert De Niro, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's just very long, and it's not. I mean, it's good. It's probably the better movie, but I have more fun with Stuck on You, so I probably vote for Stuck on You. But I recognize Good Shepherd's a better movie. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, GPO, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, yeah, un un unfortunately or fortunately, uh, Stuck on You will also get my vote. Never got around to The Good Shepherd. Uh, no, I probably should. The Nero directed it, so probably worth a shot. We did. Well, I didn't even know that. <laughs> Dang. Well, um, Steven, what do you say? <laughs> did you just skip yourself again? You skipped yourself again. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I keep doing that. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thanks for for calling me out on it. But, um, yeah, I, I haven't seen a, a Good Shepherd either. And I have seen uh, – I'm stuck on you. And the only reason why, like, if I stuck on you would have been going up against something else. That, like, uh, the Good Shepherd just kind of seems slow and, like, maybe not, not one of – uh, that would be for me. So, I mean, I'll go with stuck on you. I don't love it or anything, but uh, – I'll vote for it, sure. <laughs> so, um, Stephen. Yeah, De Niro has directed two movies, and I think they're both great. I think The Good Shepherd is really good. It's a great movie. So, um, and I, I mean, Stuck on You is a, an amusing movie. It's the Farley Brothers. I think they directed it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they got yeah. Matt Damon to agree to this movie. I just. Yeah, it's not their best, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. But the Good Shepherd is still Richie. The good. answer, money. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like, you know, I just, I just feel like no. He's been willing good. to do lighter things from time to time, and I think he, like he said in interviews, he was surprised that they even offered it to him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, Stephen, what's the other one? Bronx Tale, or what else did he do? Yeah, Bronx Tales. This okay, the other I one. Yeah, yeah. The Good oh. Shepherd, Angelina Jolie, Matt Damon, Robert De Niro. That's a great team. It's spies. It's the 1950s, 60s, whatever. Yeah, it's about the formation of the CIA, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just, it's fantastic. Um, you don't always have to have explosions and all kinds of chases and stuff for a movie to be good. And that and that stuck on you is garbage. Absolute garbage. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'm almost tempted to to change my vote almost because I see Joe uh, Pesci also and anytime he's with Robert De Niro like that's a yeah. that's a win but coming soon Joe it, Pesci so. and Pete Davidson in a streaming series yeah yeah right <laughs> so Joe yeah. Pesci takes like decades of acting and now he they, they, they get him back they, they, they reluct he reluctantly comes back to the Irishman and then he comes but then he's like yeah I'll do a series of Pete Davidson yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm excited Pete Davidson in, and like is able to get whatever he wants in this world, anything he wants. He can get Kim Kardashian, you can get get freaking Ariana Grande or or like Ice, whatever that. And ice now he gets Joe whatever. Pesci. Yeah. yeah, now he gets Joe freaking. Is it Pesci weird back. that I'm not sure which I'm uh, more jealous yeah. of? Is that weird? <laughs> yeah, he must have like some some like like mind control powers over the yeah, yeah. or something. I don't know, but but yeah, but. We have upset city. It'll be stuck on you. <laughs> so it's moving Look, on. If it's any consolation, if it's any consolation, Dan, it's not gonna. It's not gonna go any further. <laughs> probably. Yeah. No, it won't go any further. <laughs> but we have it's dogma. Any but it's no. Way back. Oh my no. god. Ooh. I, I gotta leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like suddenly I, I forgot I had an appointment. I gotta go take care of you. Um. Uh. It'll be well. It's supposed to be JPO first, but oh, <laughs> all right, I'll end right. the joke. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> damn it, because uh, man, I've, I was a big champion of the way back. I thought he again also potentially got snubbed that year. Um, God, I do I love Dogma though? I, I mentioned before, kind of my top two, three. Kevin Smith, this is in that three. <laughs> Dogma, <Stop. laughs> yeah. Dogma. Yeah, like this one's really tough. Like, I'm a big basketball guy, and like, like I really like the the story. Uh, the the uh, Ben Affleck did this movie after he got got out of, uh, out of rehab for for his alcohol issues, and like, it's really cool how that all played out. But yeah, like if if Mallrats is my number one, uh, Kevin Smith, probably Dogma might be number two. I mean, 
Like this movie is 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 great. Like, I mean, yeah, I think that that uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon have great chemistry. And then you throw in like Chris Rock, you throw in Alan Rickman, you throw in like a really cool cast around them. So let's go Dogma. Yeah. Um, Steven? Yeah, I haven't seen The Way Backs, and uh, Dogma is either my f- favorite or second favorite Kevin Smith movie, so I'll go with Dogma. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. I'm like trying to like, like decipher Brian Nussbaum's comment here. He says, so it's funny enough during Stephen and Richie we were a team called the. Oh Grinch yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe he remembers that. Yeah, that, so we, <laughs> that's we, like a trivia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, there were. Yeah, we, we we were a team briefly for what 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 league was it? I don't like, remember. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like maybe, maybe TMG or something. Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I was for um. I can't remember what it's um, for, but yeah, I. I'm sure that. Uh, but, that Brian knows, he'll probably put it in the. Brian, in the Brian will tell me what the league was for. Brian, what was their score? Uh, the results of their first match, and uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like when, when was it? What was the date that it was played? Because he's a resident fact checker. I just call yeah, him that. He, he has all these details. <laughs> but, but Dan, what do you think here? Oh my God! I mean, the Buddy Christ uh, and all that crap is just shit monster. I mean, it's just the darkness sucks. The way back, <laughs> oh my God. great. The way back is such a freaking George great Carlin. movie. I mean, I, I, I have I have a history of alcoholism, and uh, I, I was an alcoholic for a while. I'm going on ten years sober uh, next. Nice, uh, congrats, brother. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, and I and I coach basketball. This movie was like it was Disney? like oh my god, this is about me and my life, and um, I I really had a lot of struggles, and and and, and go, watching this movie and seeing this man's struggles and his ups and downs. I ended up as a construction worker and all this stuff. It just resonated with me so much the way way back, the way back did. And uh, and it, once again, Gavin O'Connor doing a sports movie. The guy freaking knows how to yeah. do sports movies, you know, and he's done a couple movies with Ben Affleck, the accountant and, and the way back. So he obviously gets along with him pretty good. They, they have good chemistry. So I got to go with the way back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Richie, you know what? I don't know if this ever happened because I was all set to go dogma because I love dogma. I love me some dogma. Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite in the Kim Smith movies, but you know, Dan, you sold me <laughs> and 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 well, you know, <laughs> the way back, it was really good, but yeah, I didn't, yeah, I, I think it's definitely, yeah, it's a powerhouse performance, uh, by Affleck again. Yeah, he did get snubbed. Uh, there was a I mean, I think the you know, I don't, I, I don't know if like I think it was like the last one of the last films I saw before the everything shut down as well. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank um, you. Good. Glad you switched it, Richie. I'm glad you switched it. This is one of the last movies I saw before the pandemic as well. Yeah. yeah. So I'll I'll go the way back. Well, that means we have a tie, and it goes to uh, you, you, I believe. Yep, the tie goes to me. You know what? Like, I'm kind of the same way. I, I was all set to give the tiebreaker to Dogma, but you know what? Let's go with the way, way back because I really do actually really like this uh, uh, movie quite a bit. I'm a basketball I'm cool guy. with that too. And I like your argument, Dan. So, yeah, let's go with the way back. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. The way back. That last and one? that'll be the last one. So, yeah. That's it. There may be a couple we, we didn't quite get to have on, on here, but we only have 64, so we did the best we could. And the other, there's other ones out there. We included a Julian Reindeer Games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a couple actually, I thought I of thought before this, but it, but they're not coming to mind now. I actually thought but. the bracket was pretty good. I mean, you guys did really good. Um, and and I yeah, and, I, yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm for not adding air to it. I thought that was this is the reason why you're doing oh, it. Yeah. You're doing it because of yeah. it. Yeah. So not adding air was yeah. the right decision. Well, if you haven't seen air yet, you go check it out because it's yeah, it's great. Like it's really. Good. I'm sure it'll do a redux at some point, which will end up be on air. Yeah. I'll end up yeah. Putting, like. Yeah. Like probably about a year or two from now, when 
I'll have to start doing some Redux. Or maybe yeah, throw in I, I think you got pretty much everything. My only athletic uh, honorable mentions that I'd say would be uh, Triple Frontier, the Tender Bar, and the Company. Oh, yeah, the, the, the Triple Frontier oh, yeah. is really good. Yeah. And the Tender the Bar, I really like a lot. Too, yeah. yeah, and he's yeah, really yeah. good in it. All right, so we have Shakespeare in Love. Let me zoom in out here. Up against the Bourne at Supremacy. So now we've already gotten all the pleasantries out of the way. We can just fly. We just try to keep it to about about 10 seconds or, or so. We can get through it pretty quick, hopefully in under like three hours, three and a half. <laughs> so, yeah. But, but um, yeah, we will go to me first. I, I'm up first, and I'm just going to go with the Bourne Supremacy. I've never seen Shakespeare in Love. I'm Steven. Born supremacy. Yeah. The uh, born Dan? supremacy. Yeah. And uh Richie. Born supremacy. Yep. And JPO. Uh yeah, born supremacy. Yeah. Born supremacy. And, and Damon's on. pretty yeah. complete too. I was gonna say maybe Green Zone, Syriana, <laughs> and if you did animation, Tiny is really good. Oh, Ooh, oh yeah, Syriana yeah. Is not in yeah. Syriana is <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, and yeah. Green, green Zone's really good too. Yeah, those only oh, yeah, three yeah. I was like are good. But I understand you couldn't fit everything. I'm just saying if I had yeah. three more, those right. would be the three more. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah, like it's good to have those honorable mentions in there. Yeah, like I remember that I started watching Green Zone and my uh, with my ex-wife and she hated it. And she made us turn it off. She's like, We're not finishing this, we're gonna do something oh, else. I'm like, I'm like, but I like this movie. I oh, want to uh, I'm glad you better She's like <laughs> You're like, well, too bad. That's what you do. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's why we got a divorce. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but we have a Jersey girl up against Saving Private Ryan, so it'll be Stephen first. I like Jersey girl, but obviously, it's got to be Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Richie, yeah, I, look, uh, yeah. I, I'm glad I was able to fight for Jersey Girls Corner here, but it's got to be, and Kevin Smith hasn't had a good run this tournament, but I'm going to go saving Bravo. Yeah. Uh, JPO? He didn't have a good run during round one, but now saving Private Ryan, of course. Come on. Yeah, let's go with saving Ryan's privates. Let's go. I believe it's shaving Ryan's privates. Yeah, yeah, shaving it. Yeah. <laughs> you find it over on Pornhub. Uh, well, uh, uh, also, yeah. my username has been Affleck on there. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We have, so like people are like, like what's Ben Affleck doing on this site? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, we have Paycheck versus True Grit, so it'll be Dan first. <laughs> I'll go with True Grit. Yeah, uh, uh, Richie. True Grit. Yeah, JPO. True Grit. Oh yeah, and I'm a big. Haley Steinfeld a fan, actually. That's probably like my my like best part of the movie, actually. So I'm gonna go True Grit. I'm I really shouldn't eat this Rice crispy. It went really bad, but oh well. Oh I mean, God, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I no, it's, it's it's died. It's it's a Minecraft one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say that is a a, a lot of mold. Um, uh, Steven. <laughs> you know what? I'll be the uh, contrarian again and go with Pichak. Yeah. You got to be that, or you wouldn't be Steven. Uh, uh, Dan. Oh, you went first, right? True Grit, true grit yep. I went first. Yeah. All right. True Grit. Okay. I'm glad it's died, otherwise it'd hate to be your toilet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me finish it before you uh, say got, that, Richie. <laughs> we, got, we got Hollywood Land up against the talented Mr. Ripley. All right, I'll kind of do that. You can just be reminded of what they beat. Um, yeah, and then it is, I think, Richie first. Yeah, I'll go uh, Talented Mr. Ray Ripley. Yeah. Uh, JPO. The twist in Hollywood land is that it was Ripley who killed George Reeves. Uh, Talented Mr. Ripley. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that could actually work. Uh I'll go the talented Mr. Ripley. Steven? As much as I like Hollywood Land, yeah, I'll go with Ripley. Yeah. Talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. Mr. Ripley is moving on. All right. He lives to see another day. Uh, we had the Born Ultimatum up against Ocean's 13. 
Okay. Uh, JPO, you first. I wanted to think a little bit about this one. I'm going to say... <laughs> I'm going to say Ocean's 13. Yeah. I think I'm going to say The Born and Ultimatum. It's my favorite of that franchise. Um, Steven? Born and Ultimatum. Yeah. Uh, Dan? Born Ultimatum. Born Ultimatum. Yeah. And uh, Richie? Born Ultimatum. Yeah. You know, ultimatum. Right to the next round. Uh, we have Rounders up against Goodwill Hunting. Oh, oh no. shit. Yeah, this, this, one's, this one could be tough, but it'll be me yeah. first. And just because, like, I wish I would have watched Rounders, maybe, and instead of, like, uh, one of the movies that I, that I did watch, maybe instead of, like, Smoking Aces or something, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, but... So I haven't seen it, so I gotta go Goodwill Hunting because it's great. Steven? I mean Rounders is pretty good, but it's no Goodwill Hunting, so Goodwill Hunting for sure. Yeah, yeah. This, is tough. this is a really tough one, but I mean it can't I mean Rounders can't hold a candle to that Goodwill Hunting, so I have to go I couldn't these two be separate with the other two we just did, you know? Yeah, but, right. Yeah, because we could have put Rounders and Goodwill Hunting on, but I'm gonna go with Goodwill Hunting. We got similar movies like that, and then we have um, all three born movies on this side also. So I mean, the fourth one's on the other side, but it's like the lesser of the three. But uh, uh, all right, Richie, what do you think? Yeah, uh, Rounders is really good, but yeah, I have to go Google Hunting here. Yeah, and uh, JPO. Uh, the one, the one with Matt Damon. Uh, uh well. <laughs> Good one hunting's gonna win anyways. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that <one>? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> uh, we have the adjustment bureau up against Invictus. The one with my damage. Right, so it'll be Steven first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Matt Damon doing pretty this well one, on this side. This one's pretty close, but I like the concept more, so I'll go with the adjustment bureau. I yeah. love the adjustment yeah. bureau, so that goes forward. Yeah. Uh, Richie. Invictus. Yeah. Uh, GPO? Uh, Justin Bureau goes through. Yeah. I'll go with the, with the adjustment bureau as well. So, adjustment bureau. All right. We have Daredevil. <laughs> we'll be out interstellar. We're going to be in Smoking Aces. Okay. Um, and it'll be Dan first. Daredevil. Yeah. Um, Richie. Daredevil. Yeah. GPO. Let's get Daredevil in the poll so people don't think we're crazy. Daredevil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, after seeing Smoke and Ace for the first time, I actually do like Daredevil better. So no, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's a legit vote this round for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, Steven. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely like Daredevil more than Smoking Aces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Daredevil. All right. <laughs> All right. That's the end of that side. So, let's see what, let's see what we can get on the other side. Hang on. Okay. Uh, All right. We got the accountant going up against Gone Girl. All right. So, we got Ooh, Matt on the other side, and now we're here with Ben on this side. Interesting. <laughs> um, and it'll be uh, Richie first. Man, that is that is cruel. Uh, <laughs> um, it's gotta be. Why can't this do it later? Accountant deserves to be the poll, but oh my god. Uh, gone girl. Yeah. Uh, a GPO? Gone girl. Yeah, like the accountant's great, but I gotta go gone girl. Uh, Stephen, I'll go with the accountant. Same here, the accountant. Yeah, yeah well, it's close, but it'll be uh, gone. Go and uh, um, coming up soon, we're going to be doing a, a podcast where we show our, some of the our favorite uh, movie trailers of, of all time. And Gone Girl has a pretty banger trailer for for uh, 
one of its first trailers. So yeah, I might be showing that, that movie one. Sucks after the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, some people's opinion. Uh, oh, look at this one. Damn it. We have the Rainmaker versus the Departed. So uh, it'll be JPO first. Ah, uh, Departed. Yeah, I've never seen the Rainmaker because I don't really rush out to courtroom uh, movies. They're not always for me. They're usually not, but I'll go to Departed. Um, Steven. I love the Rainmaker, but I got to go to the Departed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Steven. Uh, I love the Rainmaker, and it's. Uh, well, I gotta go with the Departed. Yep, it's gotta be the Departed. departed. I'm going uh, Departed too, by the way. Thanks. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that's the reason I thought you were, you went first. Yeah. All right. What's well, the Departed? Cool. Uh, uh, I'm getting up against the town. Oh wow! Uh, and it's me first. Man, yeah, this one's tough because I like them both for different reasons but you know what i think that the the talent overall is a, a better movie but i think armageddon's maybe more fun but i think i'm gonna go with the town so um steven uh armageddon yeah the Damn. town the town yeah and uh and uh richie the town yeah, and GPO. We're going to go to town, baby. Yeah, let's go to town. Right there. <laughs> Maybe right. if it... Uh, we have the brother I might have, I might have been. I might have been able to go with the town if it had a better ending. Uh, I can't even remember the ending. Mm, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it gets uh, away. It's we got like, the Brothers Grimm versus Ocean to Lip. Well, if it deserves yeah, to get it. Is it it should have ended <laughs> yeah. with him either going to jail or dying. Well, he left all the money yeah. for Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Hall. I mean, that's a good deed. Stephen hates happy endings. He, did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he, he wants people to go to, to go to jail or die. What a he die, yeah. Wow. Just criminal. Well, Stephen, you'll be at first on, on uh, this matchup. So, Brothers Grimm versus Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> I mean, this is one we probably could have skipped, but Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. We could just skip it. Is anyone going to vote for the Brothers Graham? We could just say No. Nope. No. We'll let you go first on the next one, Steve. <laughs> we'll just say we skipped it. Uh, we have the informant the fact, up against the Marsh. Oh, could right. that Ocean's Eleven be Changing Lanes? I, oh, I, lo oh, I would have loved yeah. to have had to talk about Changing Lanes. I love Changing Lanes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I wasn't a huge fan, but yeah. <laughs> These were the ones but, I missed. These were the ones I missed when I when I had a dr I dropped out by accident. Look at this battle! Oh yeah, yeah. Marsh. <laughs> oh my God, this is a good battle. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I mean the the informant, right? Yeah. Um, is that what it is? Uh, the informant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. such a funny movie. Yeah. Well, you're up first, Stephen. We'll let you go first this time since we skipped the last one. I mean, the, to me, this one is just as easy as the previous round, and that's uh, the Martian <laughs> easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you got to pick the Martian yeah. here, but you got to pick the Martian. But the Informant is really a good movie. That's probably yeah. my least favorite Steven Soderbergh movie, to be honest. Really? Right. Wow. No, no, he's done worse. <laughs> yeah. I well, think yeah. Of Barachi. Have, have you, you seen, seen the laundromat? No, yeah, actually, laundromat. I haven't. Do you think you like the oh, yeah. Liberace uh, candela under the candelabra? I have oh, not yeah. seen that, that one either. <laughs> well, uh, Richie, what do you think? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the informant. I thought it was boring. Uh, so I'm going to go the Martian. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, JPO. Uh, I'll, I'll show some love to not voting for it, uh, but I do like the informant. Uh, no, I, I, I liked it actually. But uh, yeah, my vote, my vote wise goes to Martian. Yeah, well, well, shout out to those movies where where Matt at Damon Gaines wait for a role because he kind of does it just a little bit for air. There's a little scene where where he's like, like patting on his his um, stomach in the movie, kind of making a little joke about it. But uh, I think that's that's how the actual character was. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna vote for unless the Martian. He's just, unless he's just gained weight and now he's fat. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but, he ain't but, born no more. Let him, let him eat a donut. Yeah. 
And I've never seen the informant, so I don't know. I gotta go to the Martians. So. Martians moving on. Let's see. We got Batman v Superman up against Courage Under Fire. Okay. Um, and it will be. It's. I think. Uh, Me. Dan. Oh no. I think it's Dan because you're Dan. Yeah. Dan. Again? Okay, I'll go with yeah. Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Uh, Richie. I'll go Batman v Superman. Yeah. GPO. I'm going to go Batman v Superman on this. Yeah. I've never seen Courage Under Fire, so Batman v Superman. I'm Steven. I I think, I mean, look, I like Batman v Superman, but I, I thought Courage Under Fire, one of my favorite directors, Ed Zwick, and that movie is just fantastic. So I, I go with, and this is not me trying to be contrarian, I genuinely think Courage Under Fire is the better movie. Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, Jacob's pointing out that that we didn't have a a, a tie for dog one in in the way back, but I think it's when someone dropped out or something. I think that's what it was. We're, we're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's get a BVS versus Dirt Devil final. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had somebody drop out for a, a minute. We were at. at we went from from six to five to four for a second, and then we're back to five. So <laughs> uh, we have Argo versus State of Play, uh, and no, it'll be Richie first. Yeah, um, Argo. <laughs> All right, yeah, Jacob's sure of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you vote Richie. What did you say? Yeah, okay. You saw Argo. Some reason I didn't hear it. Uh, JPO? Huh. Yeah, Argo. I think I would actually go with State of Play. I actually really like that movie. <laughs> um, Steven? They're close. Um, but I, I'll, I'll give some love to State of Play. Yeah. Argo. Argo. Yeah. <laughs> they say that comes down to you. But you got Argo pretty quick there, so Argo, <laughs> Argo to the next round. There we go. <laughs> uh, we got stuck on you. <laughs> made it through against the way back. So no, no, man, might have made it, it easier for for the uh, way back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll be a JPO. <laughs> oh, the way back. Yeah, it's got to be the way back. Pretty easy here, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> Well, I haven't seen the way back, so I'm going to go with Stuck on You. Jesus, sure, Steve, yeah. get to it. <laughs> yeah. Even uh, if you haven't back, seen it, you can kind of, you, you look, look, on, look on paper, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Anyway, way back. The way back is, is, is worse. Than stuck on. So Dan's waiting for, for Stuck on You, all right? No. The way back. The way back. Just say, after how it, I, 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 and how I it related back. to it so much. Yeah. But can I you're still so here? I went for the way I back. Keep forgetting well. whenever you're last. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. He's voting for the for the way back. <laughs> and that'll be the end of that round. So this next round, uh, whatever wins here will be in the elite eight, and we'll, we'll have a poll over in the Schmodown Friends and Family group tomorrow. So just watch for that. So we'll see which ones make it here. You can go over there. You can voice your opinion. You can yell at us, and and let us know all the movies that we missed and, and how we got it right or wrong, all that stuff. So. <laughs> But we got the Born Supremacy up against Sitting Private Ryan. Hmm. All right. It's getting tougher and tougher. So, and I believe that it's me first. And I'm going to go actually with the Born Supremacy, I think. Uh, Steven? As much as I love the Born movies, Steven? you got to go. I got to go with Sitting Private Ryan. Yeah. Sitting Private Ryan. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Richie. Saving Private Ryan. <coughs> JPO. Saving Private Ryan. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Private Ryan. But I can't go up against Shakespeare and Lord. Uh, we got True Grit going up against the talented Mr. Ripley. So um, it'll be back to Steven. So you're going to go for it. 
talented Mr. Ripley. The talented okay. Mr. Ripley. Yeah. Uh, Richie. I'm going to go to talented Mr. Ripley here. Uh, at JPO. Talented Mr. Ripley. Yep, and I'm also, let's make it unanimous. The talented Mr. Ripley. All right, it could be a favorite, maybe. Uh, we've got the Born Ultimatum, right? I think that's what it, what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, going, up, going up against Goodwill Hunting. Oh, I don't want yeah. all the porn movies to be done in the film. <laughs> yep, yep. And and uh, this is the part where we have to squint a lot to like read these titles. But uh, uh, sometimes you just know by the poster. But um, it'll be Dan first. You can go for Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Uh, Richie. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, uh, JPO. Goodwill Hunting. But we're just got to sass it. Yeah. <laughs> I would have gone with, with the Born Ultimatum. I actually do like it better. So, uh, um, Steven. Uh, fine. Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the first time you hear someone vote like, like that about Goodwill Hunting. Fine. I guess I'll vote for Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have the Adjustment Bureau going up against Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, get, get none of the porn movies the make pole. it through, but, but, well, I don't know. You guys like the Adjustment yeah, Bureau but, more than I do, so that could end up going through. But it would be funny. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but that would be funny if Daredevil does make it through. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll go to Richie first, so. Honestly, Daredevil, not even being silly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, JPO? Nah, Adjustment Bureau. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I do like the Adjustment Bureau better, but I just want to have some fun. I want to see what, what people think of the of <laughs> Daredevil in, in, in our poll. So, yeah, let's go Daredevil. <laughs> um, Steven? And I'm also legitimately voting for Daredevil. Oh, well, Dan. I, 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 like I said, you guys heard me. I love the adult, <laughs> and I love the director's cut, but I gotta go with the adjustments, you know. Oh, will it still be there double by a, a small margin. So yeah, <laughs> it is in the poll. So, <laughs> all right, first half of our elite eight. Oh, uh, see, we have Gone Girl. Going up against the, the potted. Uh, so, uh, it'll be a JPO first. Oh, yowzers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Departed. That is right. Yeah, for me, like, I'm not in love with the, the Departed. Like I said, I got I, I got three or four Scorsese movies I like better. So, I'm actually going to go with Gone Girl. I'm Steven. The Departed. Yeah. Departed. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd go that way. Oh, uh, Richie? <laughs> Departed, fine. Oh, that's, yeah. that's a good <laughs> the Departed, all right. <laughs> uh, we got the town up against Ocean 11. Ooh. So uh, it, it'll be me first. And you know what? This one's really close, actually, but I think that I got to give it to Ocean's Eleven. I just like remember my whole like theater experience when I went to go see that. Which I remember my experience watching the the um, town. I went to go see it with Chris Scott. I remember like me and him like afterwards. I was like, I love that movie. He's like, Are you serious? I freaking hated that piece of shit or whatever. Like, so, so like we were kind of at odds with that. But but I'm gonna go Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> um, Stephen. Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I, I love the town so much, but I have to go with uh, Ocean's Eleven here. Yeah. Uh, Richie. Oceans. Yeah. Uh, at JPO. I would have easily went with the town. I love the town. Ooh. So do well, I. But I think there's a little love for the, for the uh, town, but yeah, Ocean Eleven is a classic. So. And who doesn't love going to Las Vegas? Have you ever 
been before and like going over to the Bellagio and just sitting in front of the fountains in the same spot they filmed that, you know? That's always fun. So. Oh, you know you also want to rob a bank. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Every male's fan. Have... Get in the van! Yeah. Where's the van? In the van, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, we got the Martian versus Batman v Superman. Uh, and it'll be Steven. I'm almost tempted to vote for Batman v Superman, only mostly because we've already got far more far more Matt Damon movies than Ben Affleck. But, oh no! Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I, yeah. I the the Martian is just even though I like BVS, the Martian is just a hundred times better. So the Martian. Yeah, well, you're kind of right, Stephen. That that like maybe Matt Damon has a little stronger filmography, maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, Dan, what do you think? They gotta go with the Martian for the same reason Stephen said. Exactly yep. the same reason Stephen said. Yep. <laughs> uh, Richie. Yeah, uh, the Martian. Yeah. Uh, JPO. Yeah, I gotta go Martian as well. Yep, I'm also gonna go with the Martian. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, we have Argo up against the Way Back. Okay, well, at least he'll have one more movie. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least one here. Uh, Dan, uh, you're up first. Oh, my God. This is a tough one. Um, yeah. <laughs> but he did win Best Picture for Argo, and I, I, I probably should go with that one, even though I love, love, love The Way Back. I'm just going to go with Argo. I think it's a more uh, better choice here for him. Yeah. Well, uh, Richie, what, what do you think? Oh, man, it's not. Um, the way back. Yeah. Uh, at JPO. Uh, <laughs> Argo. Yeah. Well, you know me, I'm a basketball guy, so let's go with the way back. Um, Steven. It's up to you, Steven. <laughs> I you still that. haven't seen The Way Back. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you can still vote for it and based on word of mouth, right? <laughs> uh, we go Argo, right? <laughs> All right. So we, we have our Elite Eight. So those, those are the ones that will be in the poll that we're just going to get to. So, winner, what is the greatest movie of all of these movies? Minus uh, Goodwill Hunting. So. <laughs> Minus Goodwill Hunting, Ben only has two movies on here. Yeah, yeah that is true. <laughs> yeah. It's been way higher for Matt Damon because we got, we got Saving Private Ryan, which is a Matt Damon one, going up against. And I can't Rick wait. For, and I can't one. wait. Oh, wait, oh, wait, no, no. Oh, against Mr. Ripley. Tell me. So. And I can't wait to see people's reactions that Daredevil is one of the two for Ben Affleck. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, like in all the Ben Affleck movies, that's what you went with. They're gonna, yeah, it'll be funny. Uh, so yeah, Towns Mr. Ripley and Saving Private Ryan. So uh, it'll be Richie first. Tell me, Mr. Ripley. Yeah. GPO? Saving Private Ryan. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna go with the television, Mr. Ripley, because I mean Matt Damon's not in it till the end, so we'll go with. The, oh, he's the, in a lot. He, he, he's in the entire third act. Well, I mean, yeah, but but he's not in a in a big chunk of it compared to the talented Mr. Ripley. But, I mean, yes, he's but, the lead, obviously, and the talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah, <laughs> but Stephen, what, what do you think? <laughs> I mean. Despite that logic, I still can't go against Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, damn. Yeah, I actually like the argument that that uh, maps in the third part of Saving Private Ryan. If you were saying, oh, great films, I mean, all around great films, Saving Private Ryan would be the, the vote for me. But yeah, I think yeah. based off of that argument, Matt Damon was much more prominent in, in the talented Mr. Ripley, and I love his performance in the movie, and I think he's great. So I'm going to go with the talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah, like if you... If someone were to say, like, have you seen that 
the Matt Damon movie, Saving Private Ryan, people would be like, Matt Damon movie? Oh, yeah. I guess he is in it. <laughs> like, I don't think they say, oh, yeah. They'd be like, why'd you put him first? Uh, yeah. They wouldn't be confused. Yeah, like, why'd you put him first? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, it's been, be like, that. It's like more of like a Tom Hanks movie or whatever. Yeah, but Tom Hanks. we got Good Will Hunting yeah. and Daredevil. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it even an argument. So we just put through Good Will Hunting. <laughs> yes. I mean, unless anyone I, I wants to make a case hunting. for it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not even going to play Good Will Hunting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we're on, on this side, though. We, we have The Departed versus Ocean's Eleven. Now, there's oh, a matchup. Wow. So... It'll be JPL. Hey. Yeah. Right. Uh, departed. Yeah. Um, I gotta go with Ocean's Eleven. Steven? The Departed. The hmm. Departed. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Richie? The Departed. Ooh, The Departed and makes it to the final four. Alright, we got we got, we got two of them. They're both Matt Damon ones, so they're probably gonna all be Matt Damon ones, honestly. But I mean, he, Ben Affleck is in Goodwill Hunting, but <laughs> we, we got The Martian versus Argo. So it'll be me first, and I'm gonna go with The Martian. Uh, Steven. Ben should have a fine uh, should should have a movie in here, but I just like The Martian a lot more than Argo, so I'm going to go with The Martian. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Dan, I agree with Stephen. It's sad that Argo or something is in here for Ben, but uh, you can't yeah. you can't deny how great The Martian is. So I'm going to go with The Martian. Yeah, Pretty great. Uh, yeah, I'll go The Martian. Yeah. And GPO. Somebody's playing with toys or something in the background. Yeah, I am. Uh, Martian. <laughs> no, I'm in Argo. I'm in Argo. See, I was so distracted. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Matter anyway. Well, we still got enough. Yeah, it yeah, wouldn't matter. Anyway. Oh, okay, cool. So we have our 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 Matt Damon final four basically. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> Ben is in uh, the Goodwill Hunting, but we we had a. So we got the talented Mr. Ripley up against Goodwill Hunting. So it'll be Steven first. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Uh, Goodwill Dan. Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Uh, Richie. Goodwill Hunting. Uh, GPO. Goodwill Hunting. Well, I'll be the lone Steven, and I'll say... <laughs> The town in Mr. Ripley. <laughs> uh, but it'll be, be good about hunting. Yeah. Um, all right. We've got this other side. The Departed versus The Martian. And it'll be Dan first. The Departed. Yeah. Uh, Richie. The Martian. Yeah. Uh, GPO. Departed. I think I would have gone with the Martian. So it's up to you, Steven. Departed. Ooh. All right. So we have a finals, which for my money, like I I wouldn't have guessed the departed out of all these movies would have been there, but but I would have probably predicted Goodwill Hunting. That's just me, but but yeah, we'll see. Uh I'll just zoom it in a little bit so we can get get a good look at our finals matchup and we'll go. To uh, Richie first. This is it. Uh, Best Matt Damon movie. What is it? <laughs> Good Will Hunting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, JPO? Good Will Hunting. Yeah, I got to go with Good Will Hunting. <laughs> um, Steven? I said it at the beginning of the show. If Good Will Hunting won, that's kind of like a draw because. Yeah, it makes sense. They're both, e I mean, even though Matt Damon's role is bigger yeah. acting-wise, they co-wrote the script together. So yeah, that is true. <laughs> good Will Hunting. Yeah. <laughs> and Dan. Just to be a contrarian, I'll go with The Departed. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be Good Will Hunting.
hunting for the win, which I kind of felt like that was a heavy favorite going into this. Thing. The right movie won. Yeah. 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 The right movie because it's, it's got a little bit from each of them in there. So there you go. So <laughs> what's the best Matt Damon and Ben Affleck movie? Well, I mean, it's, it, it's both. It's for both. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Goodwill hunting though. Is we just picked one that they shared together. So that's cool. So, so yeah, Goodwill. Well, I'm um, uh, hunting it. I don't think Goodwill Hunting's ever won a tournament before. I don't think. Uh, I think according that, to Brian, it has. Oh. oh, oh. No, I oh don't, I, thank that. you, Statistician right, Brian. That's fair, yeah. What, what, what did it win, thank bro? You, I don't think it has. Thank you for being the fact checker. I appreciate it. Like, I'm, no, what did it, I what, what did it win, bro? And, and he sort of yeah. answered the question, what what, 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 what? Give the, him a second answer, Richie. I don't think he typed that <laughs> yeah, fast. Yeah. But he didn't what, answer the question what, last, uh, of an hour ago. What what league was uh, me and Steven the good shepherds in? I can't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if he has some answers for you while we do our plugs. But, but I'm just going to zoom out and just see it. Just, yeah. Look at that beautiful filmography uh, from two of the best of all time. Yeah. Two of the two of the best actors to ever do it. I would agree, too. Yeah. They're, they're uh, great. So. Don't go that far. Yeah. <laughs> And when they finally ever do uh, another movie together, maybe we'll do a Redux then. So it says, they did this week. Did it, <laughs> yeah, did it say it was in the one hundredth episode? Then it then it won a. Uh, I don't uh, believe it did. But, but that, but it didn't win the one hundredth episode, did it? Did it win that one? I don't think like, it did. Overall, I don't think you're remembering it wrong, Brian. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to go back right. and we'll have to. We'll have to check the game footage on that one, so <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. But anyways, yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. So yeah, I've been really uh, digging the, doing these versus matchups. We have some more uh, coming up. We we have a, uh, a a Nick Cage versus Keanu Reeves match coming up soon, and then we're also going to be doing like an old school one that's going to be a uh, uh, a Clint Eastwood versus Paul. Newman for an old school cool match. So, so yeah, that'll be, be fun. So, so yeah. And then eventually like we may do a, some kind of redux doing. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking all- at the 100th. It's like the mummy versus Roger rabbit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Then, what, are you, what, are, then, what, are you, what are you smoking? Brian? <laughs> oh, I think what he means is that then in order for it's even qualified for the 100th tournament. It had to have, have won something to be there. So I think that's what. Oh, I mean. see what he's saying. Well, uh, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. So know, maybe barbers, something. maybe mine. No, not mine. Maybe yeah. barbers. I don't remember. Well, I know that the Mary Poppins won uh, one of his. I don't. Know. I don't know about the other one though. So. I gotta get going, guys. I am exhausted. No. Worries, oh yeah, man. that was a fun time. Uh, if you want to. Want to do your plugs first, Dan? You can go ahead and, and do some plugs real quick, and you can head out. Yeah, um, I'm a I'm a film critic in Orlando, Florida, and I write for two websites. One is called DisappointmentMedia.com. The other is from from the fourth row.com. It should be in my little thing below my name. Um, also, I'm doing um, picture this with Dylan and Chad. Uh, we're doing the entire Godfather nice. trilogy. Uh, so we got this month, we're doing 1990, so stay tuned for that. We already did 72 and 74. Also, I'm on uh, awards p- podcast with Malcolm. Uh, we'll be kicking that back off in probably August or September, more than likely. This is, you know, we don't do nice. TV, we only do movies. So, uh, Malcolm and I, if you, if you like your awards, uh, talk and you want to come on and talk with us about awards season, we're more than welcome to have people on you know because it's been a lot of malcolm and me and talking so we do like to have a person to bounce off of have different ideas than what we have so if you want to be on gone with the wind just reach out to malcolm or me and we'll, we'll have her on in the, in the fall um also i got a series coming up i got my own series uh coming up called um uh my life my love 50 years in films um so there'll be a five-part series coming up so stay tuned for that and oh, nice. uh, yeah so I had a blast with you guys. This is a lot of fun. It's sad that Ben Affleck didn't have many go through to the final eight, final four, and so yeah. forth. It just shows you that Matt 
it just it had so much of a stronger filmography and you know this happened maybe if gone baby gone had been gotten in there maybe that who knows yeah well well we'll reach out to you and we do another boston one maybe like mark Wahlberg versus someone maybe soon we'll see <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. well i know I, I know we got the westerns coming up in july so maybe I'll oh yeah jump in on the westerns yeah totally yeah well, I'll be on that one for sure. So yeah, but it's been fun. So yeah, if, if you got got to head out and go for it. So it's thanks, fun. guys. So, see you, bro. Have a good night, bro. Yeah, but uh, we'll go to Stephen now. Uh, where can we find you, Stephen? I'm around. I'll be back. I I guess for uh, Wednesday for Malcolm's uh, birthday show, right? Yeah, we'll be doing doing a tournament of 64 actors from New Zealand and. Yeah. And then we'll see how many we actually will uh, recognize because Malcolm swears we're going to recognize most of them. I'm not going to do any research or anything. I just want to be surprised. So, so we'll see. Hmm. Yeah. Holy shit, Adam Sandler. Yeah. <laughs> mm. No, but I actually Adam did Sandler, look Steve up actors from New Zealand, and there are quite a few well-known actors from New Zealand. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that'll be on that one. I'm just bringing up the... the the schedule. I think that's the next one that we have you on for a little while, Stephen. But, but I mean, I'll be sending out out the, the updated schedule to a bunch of you guys because we just updated it. So, like, usually around the the beginning of, of every month, we'll we'll be hitting you guys up and and so yeah, you can sign up for some episodes because we need people. But but uh, we'll go to Richie. Where can we find you? So yeah, uh, I'll be on your guys' podcast. Is it? Is it- Tomorrow or next Sunday, uh, next week. The we're doing, it, uh, we're doing it tomorrow, so we're, we're going to do a podcast all about our biggest pet peeves. We're just going to have a complaint and a fest, and we're just going to just talk about all the things that annoy us and in life, but in a fun way. We're just going to we're, we're going to have fun with it. We're not going to make it like like too much of a negative thing. We're just going to laugh at, at 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 like crazy, stupid things that happen to us in life. You know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah so, George uh, number one in <laughs> New Zealanders. Am I right, Richie? Oh, <laughs> Especially oh. ones like you know who, who, who maybe run a Take Three channel. Anyway, you can catch me on Take Three. <laughs> on uh, I, you can catch me on Rankham uh, on 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 on, uh, on 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 Sunday actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. just, just, uh, actually, you can, uh, but with Jordan and uh, Nico and uh, and what's uh, the topic? And Jacob, where we're doing a a wrestlers uh, who are who are deserving or you know overdue for a Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, that. so nice. uh, be cool. so you, you can catch it there, and yeah, and also I think on on, on Monday I'm doing a if you haven't doing a uh, doing a little mini uh, draft with 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 JPO for with, with four Chris's. Yeah, be Chris Ooh, Pine. Nice. Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, and Chris Pratt. So yeah, um, that should be fun. And then yeah, I'm we always- actually have a, a tournament fights battles with those four. That that'll happen in like probably like the early fall or something. We I think we have it on the schedule. So. Yeah, uh, and then uh, yeah, you can obviously find me here doing tournament. You know, I'll be on the best teams one I think as well. That's on the next next one. Uh, yeah, that was cool. so yeah, catch me there. Uh, yeah, catch me doing wrestling trivia on combat wrestling trivia. Catch me on wrestling trivia on uh, uh on, on, on Jordan Owens' channel where where I suggested a whole bunch of topics that I hope he'll get to at some point. Uh, oh, I haven't even read that yet. Cool. I got I got to <laughs> including a who this round. That's like I did. Who this? <laughs> Find twenty. I want someone else to host that. I want to play that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so check that out, uh, and yeah, you know, obviously my, my my TV podcast uh, next next episode of filming is Thanks Killing, uh, should be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, so last episode we we uploaded was Five Hundred Miles Per Hour Storm. Uh, nice. Yeah, so check that out, and yeah. <laughs> nice, uh, sounds good. Uh, and JPO, where can we find you? Hey, if I'm over at the Pierisco, we have some fun over there doing movie trivia. We mentioned countdowns, maybe some drafts, all sorts of random kind of fun things. Kind of similar here. It's a catch me here. Always a pleasure. 
uh, as well as Pierce Wrestling. Similar idea, but Wrestling Five exclusive wrestling matches, interviews. Um, Mike Hammer is the next uh, wrestling interview. That's gonna be a fun one. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and I caught your your uh, match over on on uh, JB 3s channel. I I yeah. Was in a I am your current match. reigning lights out champion, yeah. and yeah, I did just defeat my buddy Corey over in CWT. So having a good yeah, time it was there. Awesome. Oh, yeah, no, I've, got, I've got a match with Hunter Chandler next week uh, on CWT. There you go. Well, the funny thing is, I was in a qualifying match to be in the, the uh, tournament, and I was like way ahead the first two rounds. I, I was totally um, uh, dominating, but then I got the wrestling category for round three. Ah. Like, like three quarters of, uh, of everybody in that league. I don't know wrestling very well, so I got screwed over in the, in the third round. Yeah. Me and Richie, we're going to have to be your <laughs> Mickey, and we're going to train you. you know, yeah, right. Like, Quickly, where's what paper you did the Rock debut at, Jordan? Go. Well, one of the uh, the questions though was 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 how many heavyweight championships has Chris Jericho won? And I guess five because he won some back from the WC at W, but they didn't count that. I was like, man, I actually had a good poll there for a minute, but I guess that didn't count. Uh, like, like world championships, like total, like, like in WWE and AEW and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That well, that, that, that's not one you can e- immediately pull. To be honest, I think it's like. Well, maybe- Maybe well, like, right, yeah, they're just asking questions, like, you sneaky bastard. Um, I feel like WWE, I think, what they're, what they're asking. Was WWE, so, like, so it was three, was that was the answer, I guess. So it was know. three, they, 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 they definitely counted the WWE, the, the CW title, then, yeah. So I don't know, I guess five, and I was wrong, so mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all I know, but um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you can find us on all the social medias at Movie Hero 2121 on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on my personal uh, Instagram at Jordan83616. You can find the uh, poll over in the Shonen Friends and Family about uh, uh, roughly 24 hours from now over in the Shonen Friends and Family group on Facebook. And uh, we'll be doing a podcast tomorrow. Uh, we'll be doing it at uh, uh, 6.30 Eastern time. We'll be doing our uh, our Biggest pet peeve for Podcast League now. And if you catch it live, you can see it live on the the uh, channel here. But then it's going to move over to the Patreon where uh, it'll cost $5 to see it if you want to watch it over there. So, um, And then we we have some trivia that's, that's, that's coming up called the Seen and Heard Trivia, which our, our next match is actually going to be Sunday, April 16th. We do have one spot open, so if anyone wants to – to a play that didn't play on the last round, you can uh, sign up for that if you want to be a, a part of that. Um, and then the it is uh, Sunday, April 16th. So got a spot up if you're mm-hmm. free. You know your calendar out that far. It's like a week and a half from now. But, but um, and then also um, our our very last um, a trivia match actually got got block from from uh youtube which i thought that would eventually would this time it wasn't for just a one second clip of puss in boots like the last one this was for like a couple songs i had to go to callmyphone.org <laughs> yeah so we we uh um have it live over on the patreon though if you want to see the last one and the trivia matches you can watch for only one dollar you only have to pay one to watch the, the trivia match because i'd like to make those free i just have to have it over there because of copyright issues so so yeah but um and then let's see what else we we have uh for the patreon we'll be doing a few drafts and then a, a couple of podcasts coming up we, we're going to be doing a um a comedy tv series or no no a comedy movie draft is what's going to be so we're going to going to draft our, our favorite comedy movies for that and then uh we have a couple of podcasts one's going to be our our uh, favorite movie uh, trailers that I mentioned on here, and then also um, our favorite sketches from from sketch comedy shows. So th- those will be over on the uh, Patreon, so we can actually play them without any copyright stuff. So it'd be fun to actually play all of that over there. And so yeah, and then uh, once we finish our our uh, animated tier ranker series that we're we're doing, we're gonna do a, a big animated movie draft. So that'll. Be- will be in a few months once we get there but but uh the last thing 
just a little bit of preview of what we have coming up for tournament fights and, and tier rankers. So um, we have uh, this Tuesday we're going to be doing for uh, Jacob Barber's birthday. And actually, he's in the, the uh, chat here. He says, uh, Ben Affleck versus Matt Damon tournament. The winner, Ben Affleck and Matt. As it should be. Yeah. Uh, so on on Tuesday, we're going to be doing uh, uh, 32 years of – Movies from uh, Jacob Barber's life. So he's going to pick his his favorite from each year that he's been alive, excluding this year, because 2020 isn't over yet. He doesn't know what his favorite movie is, but but we'll be doing that. Then also, uh, Malcolm Lay has the the same exact birthday as uh, Jacob Barber, so we couldn't do them both in in one night, unfortunately. So we're going to do Malcolm's Wednesday, and it's going to be the top 64 New Zealand actors we mentioned before. And then uh, on Friday, we're doing the Best Movie Teams Part 2. So we'll, we'll be on Part 2. We'll see what what the second half of our championship will be because the Sweet 16 will make it to the championship. Then we're going to jump back into some um, animated movies. We're doing a tier ranker for Best Animated Movies of the 2000s. So that one will be stacked. That might be like the most stacked one we've, we've had so far, possibly. I mean, there's a lot in the – the 2010s, but, but I mean, like as far as like bangers, like the the really really great ones, it'll be the 2000s. Um, and and then we have our our counter reason versus Nick Cage match, which, which will we'll have Paul Preston, Adam Witt, and Kevin Smets on that one. So that would be cool to have those guys on there. Then we're gonna be getting uh, into our best movies of 2013 ladder series. So that'll be a a three part series. And, and then for my Birthday at the end of the month, we'll be doing a mystery, a tier ranker from for my uh, birthday. So it'll be in the same vein that, that Austin did his mystery a tournament. I'm going to have a little pre-show. If anyone wants to jump on for fun, you're, you're always welcome to, or, or I can just do it solo. It really doesn't matter. But I'm going to go on to my flip chart. I'm just going to hit the randomizer for uh, the matchup. So you can see that it is a, a truly uh, random. And then we'll just pick... Uh, the first 50 movies to make it onto that will be in the mystery tier ranker. And then just to throw a couple of extra ones out there, we'll be doing uh, movies with with uh, punctuation in the um, uh, title. I've already made the list for that, and it's actually uh, pretty surprising which movies have punctuation in it. And we went with only a punctuation at the end, so like an exclamation point, a question mark, three little dots, <laughs> maybe, but, but like not... Like, like movies with like a, a comma or a colon. Like we just figured that was like way too many movies to go by on that one. But um, and then also we have our best movie teams championship that's uh, coming up, and our best movie duo part two. We had to push back because some of the birthday episodes. We're going to be doing the best movie duo part two in May. So, so that's just your your little preview of, of what's coming up. So, uh, yeah, and if anyone like to be on any episodes you can, you can just hit me up uh the best way to reach me is, is uh, you can DM, dm me on facebook or we do have a uh an email that's uh movie hero 2121 at gmail.com and, and all that stuff down in the comment section you can find that so but yeah guys this was a lot of fun so thanks again for jumping on this one and uh, we'll see what, what everyone has to say in the poll, but um, but for uh, Stephen, for uh, uh, Richie, for JPO, for Dan, for Matt Beer, I've been Jordan, the movie hero Anderson, and we will see you next time.